is roll call. And so as I uh, pronounce the names, announce the names of the commissioners, if you'll just say present or here, um, Commissioner Blackshear. Here. Vice Chair Farr. Here. Commissioner Haynes. I didn't see Commissioner Haynes yet, so we'll get back to Commissioner Haynes. Commissioner Johnson. Present. Commissioner Lawson. Here. Council Lady Murphy. Here. Commissioner Sims. Present. Commissioner Tibbs. Here. And do we see Commissioner Haynes yet? Chairman, he's gonna be joining about five minutes late. I will let you know when I see him. Thank you, Director. And so we have a quorum. And so now we are on to um, item B, which is to establish that COVID-19 requires a telephonic meeting as permitted under the governor's executive order number 16. I believe our attorney, Alex, is on the line. If you could go through this and explain and then we'll yeah, I'd be glad to. Uh, this is Alex Bonner with Metro Legal. Um, and the language here is moved that the proposed agenda constitutes essential business of this body and that meeting electronically is necessary for the health, safety, and well being of Tennesseans in light of the COVID 19 outbreak. And all planning commission rules are temporarily suspended until the commission resumes in person meetings. Thank you, Alex. And um, that would be the motion. And is um, there a motion by Vice Chair? Do you want to make the motion? Sure. I will move that we adopt the telephonic meeting. All right. Uh, through the um, explanation of, of the attorney. Yes. Yes. As specified by our attorney. And that's a proper motion, Council. A second. Any second, if you would. And who, was that Commissioner Tibbs? Yes, that was Commissioner Tibbs. And so, any discussion, if you would raise your icon hand or say you would like to discuss more. Seeing none, we're ready for a roll call vote. Commissioner Blackshear. Aye. Vice Chair Farr. Aye. Commissioner uh, Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Lawson. Aye. Councilor Murphy. Aye. Commissioner Sims. Aye. And Commissioner Tibbs. Aye. Ayes have it, and we have adopted a telephonic meeting. So now we are on to. Before we get into the agenda, let me just um, do a couple housekeeping notes. And I do want to welcome all the commissioners and the public and the council members for dialing in. Um, as of now, I believe that um, we will be doing telephonic meetings so far until the end of April. Is that correct, Director? I, we can probably get into this late, more later, but. Um, yes, that, that is what we are anticipating. Um, the governor's order extends through April, although I don't have a crystal ball and don't know what the governor's office may do. It's our expectation and we are planning actively for a return to in-person business in May. Okay. Um, Thank you for that. And I just wanted the commissioners to start thinking about that and, and be prepared. And if they have any questions, please, you can reach out to um, Lucy, um, the director, and, and discuss with her. And then Lucy and I can discuss if. Um, and so we'll be monitoring that and get that communication to everyone quickly. Next on, on housekeeping, like I said earlier, please keep all your devices. This includes the council members and everyone else on the line. Um, on mute, unless you're speaking, we appreciate it. it really helps um, with the feedback, um, electronic feedback. Next, uh, when I say raise your icon hand, it's the hand in the WebEx app, not your actual hand. So, um, and we'll go slow to make sure that everyone has the ability to discuss anything. And so, um, commissioners, just speak up um, as we normally do. And so now. Um, we are on to the
is sent out to the commission members. And so we will need a motion to adopt the agenda. Is there a motion? Uh, Vice Chair, do you want to make that motion? Sure, I will move <laughs> that we adopt that. Adopt Sorry, I'm having tech. Yes, I'm having technology challenges. Hold on, but yes, that's my motion. Okay, thank you. And Commissioner Tibbs, I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Tibbs. Seconds the motion. And is there any discussion? If you would raise your icon hand or say that you would like to discuss. And seeing none, we're ready for a roll call vote. Commissioner Blackshear. Aye. Vice Chair Farr. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Lawson. Aye. Council Lady Murphy. Aye. Commissioner Sims. Aye. Commissioner Tibbs. Commissioner Tibbs. Aye. Thank you. And the agenda is adopted. Now we're on to eyes have it commission the uh, adoption agenda. Next, we're on to item D, which is the approval of the March 11th, 2021 minutes. And those were also posted and, and sent out to the commission members. And so we'll need a motion to adopt um, the minutes. Is there a motion? Chair, I will move that we adopt the minutes from the last commission meeting. Thank you, Vice Chair Farr. Appreciate that motion. And is there a second? This is and Commissioner Sims and I second it. Thank you, Commissioner Sims. Proper motion second. Any discussion? If you would raise your icon hands or verbally state you'd like to discuss. Seeing none, we are ready for a roll call vote. Commissioner Blackshear. Aye. Vice Chair Farr. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Lawson. Aye. Council Lady Murphy. Aye. Commissioner Sims. Aye. Commissioner Tibbs. Aye. Ayes have it and the March 11th minutes are adopted. Now we are on to the item E, which is the recognition of the council members. And um, we take these as I see, just like we do at the physical meeting as y'all come into the teleconference meeting and so I saw Councilman Rosenberg first. And you can either speak on this item or uh, at this time or on your item as well. I'll wait. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Appreciate you joining us. Next, I saw Councilman Bradford. Thank you, Chair, for the recognition. I will wait until my items come up. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, sir. And then I saw Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Chair. I have items 12 and 13, and uh, they are on consent, and I support them staying on consent. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Councilman, for joining us. Uh, Councilor Virtue. Saw you. Thank you, Chair. I actually have no items. I'm facilitating uh, a meeting, so. Uh, uh, that, that's what I, that's why I'm on the meeting. So I don't need any recognition. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I didn't see any. Um, uh, oh, oh, Council Member Gamble. Thank you, Chair, and thank you all for your service. I would like to speak briefly about uh, item number 19, which is actually on the agenda for recommended for approval on consent. Just want to thank the uh, count of planning staff uh, for your help in, in bringing this forward. Uh, the applicant uh, was wanting to rezone his property in order to uh, build a rental unit. And uh, this property does sit in a residential uh, community or residential zoning. However, it's borders right next door to office and commercial space. So we were able to, we had a, held a community meeting about it. Uh, the community was supportive 
of the of the change because of its location and proximity to uh, office and commercial zoning. Uh, but but we were able to work with planning to get a, a zoning code that was more in line with the transition of the neighborhood. So I just appreciate their their help and work on that and working with the applicant and the community and just want to express that support. So thank you. Thank you, council member. Appreciate that. And uh, Lisa, do you see any other council members or director? I don't see any others. Hi, hi Chairman. This is Lisa. Um, I do not. See, I'm just checking under attendees. Um, I do not see any additional council members. Thank you, Lisa. Appreciate that. All right. So, and, and if we see some come on, we always try to recognize them when they when they come on the call and um, in between the the hearings. So I, I want to thank all the council members for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you as we work hand in hand, often all the time on on zoning issues. Next uh, is item F, which is items for deferral or oh, before we get to that though, I did notice that um, Commissioner Haynes, are you present? Yes, sir. I have joined. All right. Welcome, Commissioner Haynes. We'll put you down as present. Appreciate you joining us. As always, we are ready for item F, which is items for deferral withdrawal. And I believe Ms. Mulligan is going to take us through that. Lisa, are you you're, are you there? Is, yes. There, Sorry, there, I was there. I was uh, fighting to get myself unmuted tonight. Um, yes. Hi, this is Lisa Milligan with Metro Planning, and the following items are indicated for for deferral or withdrawal. Item number one on page three of your agenda. 2020Z 013TX001. This is a request related to an owner-occupied short-term rental overlay district. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 22nd, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Item number two, 2021 SP 008001, 6821 Old Charlotte Pike. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 8th, 2021 meeting. Item number three, 2017 S 250002, Rural Hill Road Bend. This is a subdivision. Staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Item number um, item number four on page four of your agenda, 2020S-145001, the Bordeaux Agrihood. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 8, 2021 meeting. Item number five, 2021S-014001, Carlton Estates. Staff recommendation is to defer to the May 13th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Item number six, 2021S-015001, Rivergate Station, Section 1, Second Resub of Lot 2. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 8th, 2021 meeting. And I would like to know that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Item number seven, 2020Z 119PR001, a rezoning in the Germantown neighborhood. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 22nd, 2021 meeting. Item number eight, 2021Z 017PR001, a rezoning on Couchville Pike. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 8th, 2021 meeting. And I would like to note that C Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. Item number nine on page five of your agenda, 2021Z028PR001, a rezoning on Ned Shelton Road. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 8th Planning Commission meeting. Item number 10, 2021Z029PR001, a rezoning on 11th Avenue North. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 8th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Um, on page six of your agenda, item number 17, 2004P013009, Mill Creek Town Center Phase 2 PUD Amendment. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 8, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Item number 21 on page seven of your agenda, 
2021 CP 009001, second and Peabody. Staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. And I would like to note that Commissioner Blackshear is recusing herself from that item. And item number 28 on page nine of your agenda, 2020Z 143PR001. It's a request to rezone from on Pennington Bend Road. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 8, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Thank you, Lisa. So commissioners uh, and Lisa, make sure that I get these correct for the record. And so the items for deferral withdrawal are items number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 17, 21, and 28. Is that correct, Lisa? Yes, that's correct. Excellent. So commissioners, you've heard the items for deferral withdrawal. Is there a motion to defer? If you raise your icon hand or Commissioner Tibbs. Make a motion to remove the deferral. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? That's a proper motion. Hi, There's Chair. Second. It's it's uh, Vice Chair Farr and I will second that motion. Thank you, Vice Chair. Proper motion and second. Any discussion? If you would raise your icon hand or verbally state you'd like to discuss. And let's make sure. Seeing no other discussion, we are ready for a roll call vote. Commissioner Blackshear. Aye. Vice Chair Farr. Aye. Commissioner Haynes. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Lawson. Aye. Council Lady Murphy. Aye. Commissioner Sims. Aye. Commissioner Tibbs. Aye. Ayes have it, and those items are deferred. Now we're on to item G, which is the consent agenda items. And I believe Ms. Mulligan is going to take us through this as well. Lisa? Uh, hi, Chairman. Yes, this is Lisa Milligan with Metro Planning. As information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. Items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. The following items are on the consent agenda. Item number 11A on page five of your agenda, 2021 CP 008002, North Nashville Community Plan Amendment. It's a request to amend the North Nashville Community Plan by changing from neighborhood maintenance to neighborhood center policy for properties located on Fifth Avenue North. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item 11B, the associated case, 2021 SP 013001. 1803 Fifth Avenue North. It's a request to rezone from CN to SP for property located on Fifth Avenue North to permit four multifamily residential units and 1,900 square feet of non-residential uses. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number 12, 2021 SP 017001. 200 Craig Mead Drive office building. It's a request to rezone from RS10 to SP for a property located on Craig Mead Drive to permit 6,000 square feet of general office space. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item number 13 on page six of your agenda. 2020S 071001 Old Hickory Credit Union. It's a request for final plat approval to create three lots on properties located on Donaldson Pike. Um, staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. 
Item number 14, 2021S034001. It's a final plat for re-subdivision of lot 155 on the plan of the Waters Place on Maxi Lane and the north one half of Lakota Avenue. It's a request for final plat approval to create two lots on property located on Branch Street. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item number 15, 2021S045001. The resubdivision of lots five and six airport logistics. It's a request for final plat approval to create four lots on property located on Reynolds Road in Old Murfreesboro Pike. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item number 16, 2021S048001, 2306 and 2312 Clarksville Pike. It's a request for final plat approval to create three lots on property located on Clarksville Pike. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. On page seven of your agenda, item number 18, 2021Z027PR001. It's a request to rezone from RS5 to RM20A NS for a property located on Elmhurst Avenue. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 19, 2021Z025PR001. It's a request to rezone from RS20 to R20 for a property located on Westchester Drive. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item number 20, 2021DTC007001. Voorhees Residential Development Tower 2. It's a request for overall, overall height modification on properties located on 7th Avenue South and 8th Avenue South to, a, to permit an additional three floors for a total of 20 floors. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. And under other business on page nine of your agenda, item number 29, bonus height memorandum for 810 Division Street. Con item number 30, contract renewal for Letitia Berkland and Patrick Napier. And item number 34, to accept the director's report. Thank you, Lisa. And so, commissioners, you heard the consent agenda items, but we'll go through these slowly, so make sure I get these correct. And so Chairman? the items... Chairman? Yes. yes. This, is Council this is Council Lady Murphy. And I, yes. and I think that Council Lady Delicia Porterfield is trying to get on um, and she would like to bump item 15 from consent. So I don't know if we need to do that now or if I just need to move for it to be deferred or if, if we could just hold off on that one until she's able to get on the call. Um, sure, is there a reason or is it just... Is, is, is... I mean, I'm just I know that kidding. she's trying to get on the call. I, I, I don't. I, sh I see her listed. Um, I don't know if we want to call on her now or how you want to handle that. Yeah, I mean, we, we're um, let's um, yeah, let's let's uh, let's get her on the well. Let's, I see. Is um, this this is Councilwoman Porterfield? I see her now. She's been moved to. Panelist. And her hand just yeah. raised. So hopefully, yeah. Could we call on her maybe and clarify? Yeah, she has to unmute herself. Uh, thank thank yeah. you so very, thank you so much, and thank you for uh, recognizing me. Thank you, Councilmember Murphy. I apologize. I was having a, a, a little bit of a hard time uh, getting on. I was hoping to to have this item deferred. I did want to have the opportunity to speak with um the the applicant to, to get an understanding of of um exactly what they're they're trying to do um with the subdivision of the lot so i was hoping for a one meeting deferral to give me the opportunity to to speak with them and, and get some clarification some of my constituents did have questions about this and i just wanted to make sure that we were able to get all those questions answered before we move forward thank you Ken. and that's item 15. Uh, yes. Okay, we'll 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 defer that item uh, one minute. Can so we make we sure there's not a time? Can we make sure there's not a timing issue? I'm sorry, this is Council Lady Murphy. Uh, Chair, could we verify with staff that it's not going to be automatically approved based on the uh, submission of the application? Yes. Let's let's find that out from the team. Lisa, do you have? Is it Lisa that would have that information? 
Lisa, I think it would be helpful. This is Lucy to just clarify for the commission, the state, the sort of requirement and that it's our understanding that the clock would start today. Can you just confirm that Lisa so we have it on the record? Sure, there are a couple of different timing um, issues with subdivisions as they relate to state law. There is a uh, requirement that it be placed on an agenda within a certain amount of time of being um, uh, submitted. I don't have the actual date that that was submitted. Um, however, the more important is that um, after it's on an agenda, the Planning Commission only has 60 days um, to uh, review or it is automatically approved. And so that, that clock would start today. Okay, thank you. So I, I think a one meaning deferral is appropriate is what you're saying, Lisa? Is okay, it won't automatically. Uh, a, one, a one meeting deferral is, is fine. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and without objection, we'll one, Item 15 is bumped off the consent agenda and um, it's our policy during the COVID when it gets, when something gets bumped, it gets deferred one meeting. Um, so thank you, Council Lady, for speaking. So now, any, thank you, so, so much. Thank you Council Lady. So we're back on the consent agenda items and so I'm gonna read through these very slowly and make sure that these are the items that are gonna be approved on the consent agenda. So those items are 11A, 11B, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20, 29, 30, and 34. Is that correct, Lisa? Ms. Mulligan, are you there? You're, there did, you are. I'm sorry, did you read? As long as you, I, I, did you read item 15? That one will not be on the consent agenda now. No, I did not. Item okay. 15 is not on there. So let yes, me read through them one more time. Yeah, sorry. Just to make sure. 11A, 11B, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18, 19, 20, 29, 30, and 34. Is that correct, Lisa? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so um, commissioners, you've heard the items for passage on the consent agenda. We will need uh, a motion to adopt uh, these items. And so Commissioner Tibbs, you wanna make a motion? I see your hand is up. I make a motion. Yeah, my hand didn't get back down, but yes, I make a motion to approve. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Tibbs. And is there a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Lawson. Commissioner Lawson seconds it, so it's a proper motion and second. Any other discussion? If you would raise your icon hands and or state that you would like to speak. Uh, Chair, do we have to amend the uh, list of items for deferral based on moving this from consent to, or is that just, no, we don't have to worry about it? It automatically gets deferred. Okay. Okay. by one meeting and I would say without objection it's uh, deferred and we can add it to the to the deferral list okay yeah thank you vice chair always oh, see everybody's trying to keep me straight and I appreciate that very very much because <laughs> you know this phone stuff is a little harder than one would think but um, I think we do pretty good at it all right so thank you vice chair and so we are ready for a roll call. Seeing no other discussion, we are ready for a roll call vote. Commissioner Blackshear. Aye. Vice Chair Farr. Aye. Commissioner Haynes. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Lawson. Aye. Council A. Murphy. Aye. Commissioner Sims. Aye. Commissioner Tibbs. Aye. Ayes have it, and that's adopted. And I want to say thank you to Council Lady Murphy for letting us know about the other Council, council Lady Portfolio. I appreciate that. All right, so now we are on to the public hearing. On We are on item H, which are the items to be considered. And so 
I have my list here and Lisa and or Director Kemp, make sure that I'm correct, but I believe we're considering seven items and that's items 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27A and 27B, is that correct? Hi, Chairman, that's correct. All right, excellent. Well, then we'll get right into uh, the public hearing items. And so before we actually begin the presentation, um, for the listeners at home, we have provided multiple ways uh, for the public to participate in the telephonic meeting. Um, normally, we take the applicant first, then supporters, then opponents, but because of different ways for people to participate, we'll be taking supporters and opponents together. To help us, please state your name, your address, and whether you support or oppose the request. As usual, we took emailed comments through Tuesday at 3 p.m. At the start of each public hearing um, tonight, Lisa will give a summary of how many email comments um, that were received on a particular item. We have a call-in number uh, for members of the public who wish to call in to testify. Please wait until the public hearing for your items to begin, um, for your item begins before calling because we place you in a queue. Um, so you don't have to wait on your item, you call in immediately on that item. Um, and we'll put you in a queue. Um, also, please be aware that there's a legally required 30 second delay. That means if you're watching your screen at home while commenting, um, you're gonna get confused. So make it because it's slightly behind you. So just focus on um, talking um, into the phone and not on the television because it's really confusing. And then also please put your television on mute and that will help with feedback. Um, so for each item, we'll also um, let you know when to call in uh, and I'll ask um, Lisa for email comments on each item as we go through. So we are ready to begin uh, item number 22 and we need to do the presentation. So I believe that's Chairman, Logan? Chairman, yes. excuse me. This is Lucy Kempf with the Planning Department. Um, I wonder if you could take roll call again. I'm getting some correspondence from commissioners who may be losing power with the hailstorm, and since we're all in parts of the of the county, I want to make sure that everybody's connected to the meeting. Um, yes. Yes. For uh, sure. And make sure we can continue. Yes, so let's do that. So thank you, Director. And because um, this is, we're usually powered by internet. If power goes out, internet goes out. And so um, folks can try to call back, I think by phone, phone. Um, but let, that's a great idea. We wanna make sure that we have enough for quorum so and in particular i might advise just checking also in the call center as well as the um the commissioners okay um that i i'm not sure exactly you, you're gonna have to help me with who's supposed to be at the call center as well so um i'll go sure. through the commissioners yes or sean um, this is Sean Shepard in the call center. <laughs> okay. We, um, I'll, I'll let you get to the, um, the commissioners. I did want to let you know, um, we, we had a moment where we weren't able to hear just because of the, the, the noise level of the hail. Um, but it's, we can hear now, but I, the presenter for this item lost power and internet. So we're going to be doing a little, um, adjusting here to see if we can get him in by phone. Um, so while you're taking role, that's what we'll be working on um, on our end. So. Oh, okay, and, and if we need to, we can always um, roll that to the end of the calendar, that item if we need to, um, and then do it in not in the order of the agenda if we have to. So we can roll it to the heel if we need to. Okay, uh, thank we'll, you, Sean. we'll see if we I can get him connected while you're taking roll, and hopefully we'll be, um, we'll be back up to speed in just a second. All right, so we have these, for everyone listening, we have these technology challenges, but we'll try to, try to work 
through them um, and and try to make it through. So we'll do roll call vote to make sure the commissioners are on the line that we have a quorum. Commissioner Blackshear. Here. Vice Chair Farr. I am here, but I have lost power. Um, so we may need to coordinate around um, if it's if I if I don't get my power back, I may have a hard time picking up when you leave as I'm stuck with just my phone <laughs> and 50 percent battery. OK, so we have no to problem. we may have to be agile with with a switch at some point this later on. OK, and, and for everyone, I unfortunately ha have a work commitment that I um, have to leave at five o'clock um, meeting. So we may have to get um, Commissioner Blackshear or Commissioner Haynes to direct the meeting and uh lose director camp if you can work on that that would be helpful Just i will do a backup plan thank you chair thank you all right so commissioner blackshear is president vice chair far commissioner haynes still here commissioner johnson i'm here too with under hail okay commissioner lawson Commissioner Lawson is, is, he's, Commissioner Lawson, are you present? I am present. I don't Perfect. know what is happening. Thank you, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Council Lady Murphy. Present. Commissioner Sims. I'm present, but I'm in the same con condition as Vice Chair Farr, um, and I may lose. It's flickering right now, and the hell was so loud, I missed some of the conversations. Okay, and Commissioner Tibbs? Here. All right, we'll continue. if, if uh, We'll try to keep in contact with everyone, and so we still have quorum at this particular point. And Sean, are you on the line? Is our presenter on the line, or? Hi, Chair. This is Sean Shepard in the call center. We did get our presenter, Logan Elliott, dialed back in. Um, so we will um, unmute him and he can give the presentation for item 22 um, when you're ready. And just a heads up for Lisa, who's managing the slideshow, he can't see it, <laughs> um, but he feels good that he will be able to, um, to cue you as needed. But just so you know that, that he's, um, he's without visual, he'll just be audio. Okay. Go ahead, Logan. Thank you, Chair. My name is Logan Elliott, and I'll be presenting item 22 on behalf of the planning department. Um, if I if I start talking about something and the slide seems wrong, then just let me know, and we can try and get that cleared up. But uh, please move to the next slide. Item 22 is a request to modify the villages of Riverwood Urban Design Overlay District to change the permitted land use from 776 assisted living units to 210 multifamily residential units. Next slide, please. Staff's recommendation is to approve with conditions. Next slide, please. The site is zoned RN9 and permits nine residential units an acre. Additionally, the subject site is a part of the village of the Riverwood Urban Design Overlay District that was approved in 2004. Urban Design Overlay Districts apply an additional layer of regulation to properties and are intended to allow for the application and implementation of special design standards. The land use is still governed by the base zoning district and the UDO applies unique design standards to the property. This UDO permits a mixture of residential types. Next slide, please. The policy for this site is suburban neighborhood evolving open space and conservation policy. The suburban neighborhood evolving policy aims to create and enhance suburban neighborhoods with greater housing choice, improved connectivity, and more creative, innovative, and environmentally sensitive development techniques. The intent of the open space policy is to preserve and enhance existing open space areas, most of which are publicly owned parks and greenways. The open space policy here recognizes a planned greenway along the Stones River. And the conservation policy intends to keep undisturbed environmentally sensitive land features in a natural state. And the conservation policy here recognizes the Stones River and the significant slopes that exist on the property. 
Next slide, please. Here, I imagine we are seeing the master plan for the villages of Riverwood UDO as approved in 2004. The UDO was approved to allow the development of 1,978 residential units, 45,000 square feet of mixed use commercial, and two type D billboards, with the total site area being just under 220 acres. The subject site for today's consideration is section M and is located at the bottom of the screen and is about 23 acres. The subject site was approved for a 776 unit assisted living facility, which amounts to 2,328 beds. Next slide, please. The application proposes to modify the UDO by replacing the 776 units of assisted living with 210 multifamily residential units. These units would be a new type, new building typology for this urban design overlay district and would be a townhome style unit developed through a horizontal property regime. The townhomes are similar to the existing townhomes in the villages of Riverwood UDO with the uh, I being limited to three stories and with the parking for the units to be located to the rear of the units, either in a garage or surface park. The units will front onto storm uh, stone water drive where possible. And this is the existing public street that the site has fronted onto and otherwise will front onto an internal open space. As a result of the community engagement that the applicant has undergone in the past several months, the applicant has added additional regulatory standards to this new building typology um, since we last heard the item in October of 2020. Next slide, please. With this being said, staff finds the proposed modification to the UDO to be consistent with the land use policy and staff's recommendation is to approve with condition. Thank you, and I'm here to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. And so we'll open this item for public hearing. And is the applicant on the line? I am here. Can you hear me, Mr. Chairman? Yes. And so welcome. You have 10 minutes and you can save two of the 10 minutes for rebuttal. Please state your name and address. Okay. Uh, this is Roy Dale. Uh, my office is 516 Heather Place. I reside at 1651 Stokely Lane in Old Hickory. And so I'm representing the applicant on this process, requesting this modification to the UDO. <clears throat> as uh, the staff member had mentioned, this was on your agenda as a recommended approval item in October, <clears throat> but you had quite a few comments and emails from people, many that didn't really understand, I guess, that this was a modification, it's not a zone change request. <clears throat> and as a result of that, even though the staff was recommending approval, <clears throat> several commissioners wanted us to have a community meeting. And so I really took that to heart um, because of holidays. We really uh, extended this period quite a bit. I know we've had at least three, maybe four Zoom meetings. Uh, at each meeting, we have someone new. Uh, it's, it's been a little bit of an exercise to explain that this is not a zone change request. This is really almost a choice of a particular use that's approved today of 2,328 beds in a six-story building with 776 parking spaces and pretty much what is in it within a built out residential community. It was always my feeling and I think it's shared by the most that that intents of a use for an assisted living at the end of a uh, developed residential community is not a good fit. And so um, my client wants to do a townhouse development. He wants to do similar uh, architectural styles as within the community. I've had a lot of discussion with the community as a result, and you saw a few minutes ago, there have been many items added to this as conditions or things that would have to be done in conjunction with the development of this property. As mentioned before, I think this UDO was approved in 2004, 16 years ago. And uh, now that this development is fully pretty much developed with the exception of this piece, there are a lot of things that the community wanted to look at, things that are in existence today that weren't in existence before. And so as a result of that, we've added environmental conditions, we've added some traffic conditions, we've added um, internal sidewalks and minimal uh, restrictions of height, and, and we've created square footage similar to what's within the, the existing UDO. And I think we're in a pretty good place. Um, there's always a few that still don't understand that this is zone change, this is not a zone change request. 
many that would prefer this just to remain as open space as it is today, which is never was intended to be. It's always intended to be developed as a um, another uh, use, which in this case was a very intense multi-story building that even had a commercial component up to 20,000 square feet of, of commercial within it, which is totally out of character, I think, within with this community, and I think most would agree to that. So uh, the staff member did a great job explaining this. I don't think there's a lot more for me to say other than that. I did take this to heart. We've had a number of meetings, and I think we've done the best we can. And I, I'm, I'm confident that the majority of the people in here would rather see townhouses with conditions placed within this UDO versus the existing use, so the existing proposed use. So I would hope that uh, the commission would agree with staff and uh, support a modification of the UDO. I'll retain two minutes, although I don't think it'll be necessary, uh, hopefully, and uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dill, for joining us today. And you have, as you said, you have two minutes for rebuttal. And so now we are ready to take calls um, from the members of the public who wish to call in. Your screen should now show in the call number so please call in now. Uh, you don't need to wait um, as we will place you into a queue on this particular item. As a reminder, please only call in on this current case. When you begin your testimony, state your name, address, and whether you support or oppose the item. We are not able to display the timer visually, but Sean will keep track of time. You have two minutes and she will let you know when you have 30 seconds remaining and then when your time is up. Um, and so, and then we'll move on to the next caller. While we wait for callers to get into the queue, Lisa, did we receive any emails on this item? Hi, Chairman, this is Lisa with Metro Planning. We received um, 39 emails in opposition and two emails in support. Thank you. And Sean, do we have any callers on this item? Chair, we do have callers for this item. Um, we'll get the first one placed in the meeting in just a second. I'll let you know when they're in. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chair, you should have the first caller in the meeting. Thank you. Uh, welcome, and you have two minutes to speak. Please state your name and address, and you may begin. Yes, hello. My name is Heather Smith, and I own a townhome in the Villages of Riverwood neighborhood. Thank you for this opportunity. I was part of collecting some data last um, October, and I've been a part of um, most of the meetings uh, since. I'm speaking um, in opposition to uh, the current um, slate of conditions because I would like to see more conditions. And also, I'd like the commissioners to know that um, a letter was submitted on behalf of our um, HOA board. And um, I'm not sure, I believe Logan received that, but I don't know, um, maybe I didn't dial in soon enough to hear if that had been submitted to you all. But there is a letter um, I'd like to draw your attention to. Um, personally, as a, as a resident, I'd like to see some additional conditions. I would really like to see garages with fenced-in courtyards, public streets and alleys, similar exteriors, um, no open parking lots. Um, that would really be um, consistent with the rest of our neighborhood as every single townhome and home in our neighborhood have garages, which is one of the things that really brought me to um, um, purchase in this neighborhood. I'd also like to see a traffic study of the three major in intersections, Bell Road and Dodson Chapel, Dodson Chapel and Central Pike, Dodson Chapel and Riverwood um, Boulevard. There's other conditions I'd like to see um, consistent, but um, I'm not sure how much time I have left. 
Um, I know that a part of what's also... I'm sorry? Just letting you know you have 30 seconds remaining. Okay, thank you so much. Um, other requests would be, um, you know, those would be sort of the minimum that I would like to see um, before this passes. And um, also the consideration of maybe a park. Nowhere in the neighborhood do we have a park. Um, and I know that was something that was um, originally suggested, or at least listed in the original UDO. Um, and maybe even like a noise study in combination with traffic study because of the- Oh, your time has expired. Please finish your thought. Okay, because of the proximity to I-40. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sean, we're ready for the next caller. Terry, you have the next caller. Thank you. Welcome. You have two minutes. You may begin. Please state your name and address. My name is Bonnie Heiler, and I have a single-family home in the villages of Riverwood. I'm also the vice president of the um, HOA board here. And um, I, the letter did go into Logan. Again, I hope that you have seen it. And one of the reasons that we wrote this letter was because we would like to consider accepting this new development into our HOA I do not, we do not oppose having townhomes, but we would like to make sure that we can have a consistent set of rules throughout the neighborhood and have consistency throughout our neighborhood. So not only do we want the consistent rules, but we would also like the uh, neighborhood to fit seamlessly into the neighborhood that we already have now so that it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Um, one of the reasons we would like to have uh, public streets is because the developer right now is looking for private streets, and there is no possible way that we would be able to accept this into our HOA uh, if we had to maintain our streets. All of our streets in the neighborhood are now public, and we'd like to make sure that we can keep that again. Otherwise, we won't be able to accept it into our HOA. Finally, all of the um, townhomes do have a driveway and a single garage. They also have courtyards, which helps because just about everyone has a dog these days. And finally, um, we well, not finally, but brick and stone exterior facades. Okay, and finally, what's being discussed in the UDO is a parking lot with lined parking spaces, and we absolutely do not want that. It is not consistent with the neighborhood at all. So thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Next caller, Sean. Terry, you have the next caller. Thank you and welcome. You have two minutes to speak. Please state your name and address. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Larry Thompson. I own a single family home in the village of the Riverwood, about five houses up from where they intend to build. Um, I'd like to say that Mr. Clark did indeed hold three meetings, the first of which he missed the first 45 minutes of because he forgot that he scheduled it on that night and when he should show up. The second one, he was in the hospital, and that was very disruptive, and we didn't get a lot of answers. And the third one, he couldn't run the affairs thing. Half the people who tried to attend couldn't get in, and I was one of those. I'd like to request a, a role study, because I know we're not going to win this argument. I appreciate the conditions that you have added already. I would also like to state that I have, in the four years I've lived here, experienced three years of construction. The first year I was here, I replaced half of my roof. The second year, I had to replace the whole roof because of wind, because of the alterations that they made to the trees and the ground. And it, I would just like someone to consider that as well. Uh, I'd also like them to have some sort of a condition of respect of the neighborhood. If they're going to be coming into the neighborhood now with construction vehicles, I can't imagine what that's going to be like. They usually start about 6.15 in the morning. They worked on Thanksgiving. They've worked on Sunday. They have not been good about keeping um, 
a place for the people that are working there to urinate, for example. And I just think that's horribly. They're going to do it in my neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, I'd also like to say that Mr. Clark said that there would not be 210 homes built, but it would be closer to 120, and I didn't hear anything about that. So I still think there are issues left to resolve. Thank you. Thank you. Next caller, Sean. Terry, you have the next caller. Welcome. Caller, you have two minutes. Please state your name and address, and you may begin. Okay. Hey, my name is John Barkai. I live at 1641 Stonewater Drive, Harmony, Tennessee, 37076. After our last meeting with Roy Dale with Dale Associates, Mr. Dale presented the plan for the new townhouse to be built. Again, he stressed, if not approved, the six-story senior care facility will be built on the property. Knowing something's going to be built, I have problems with the new townhouses having no public roads, very limited parking, and not being a part of our community, and not looking like our existing community. Mr. Gale still wants to have the right to build three-story buildings, even though he said he would not. Our green space is right opposite the townhouses and will definitely be used by the new residents. If Mr. Gale has his way for free, the existing residents will be made to pay for it. With insufficient parking, Stonewater Drive and the other side streets will be utilized by the new tenants. Mr. Deal said there is no plan to add green space around the new townhouses. The lack of any public roads in this development will become a safety hazard with cars parking on both sides of the private alleys. Other than the strip of grass and sidewalks between the front of the buildings, there is no provision for landscaping. The traffic study must be performed on Dutson Chapel Road, Bell Road, inside the village's original world. When this UDL was approved, there was less development in the area. I believe that these townhouses would be an asset to our community if proper guidelines are imposed by the Planning Commission. And I thank you to put them there. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you, sir. And so, um, Vice Chair, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to hand the chair over to you and vice chair are you still able um i think i can probably do this case um but then okay. we'll have to reassess because i don't okay. have power or internet yet well i think um commissioner haynes after this case after if you can't chair just uh commissioner haynes will take over okay yeah I can finish okay. this one and then okay. um, and then hand it off to Commissioner Haynes Thank if nothing you. changes. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Vice Sean, Chair, do we have this is Sean. You have the next caller in the room. Great. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. Hi. Hi. You are welcome. You have two minutes. Uh, please state your name and address. And um, again, note if, let us know if you are speaking for or against this project. Thank you. My name is Jessica Schultz, and I am at 3113 Noble Valley Drive in Nashville, Tennessee. And I am speaking in opposition of this agenda item number 22. The concerns I've heard from the people that live in the area are all of which have Nashville residents concerned in regards to many um, different circumstances as far as what Mr. Roy Dell also even mentioned in his application earlier is that there's a big misunderstanding between zoning changes and modifications and what that means to the neighbors. So where I've heard as far as all of the concerns are, you know, a misunderstanding and not really clear transparency in regards to what, um, you know, is actually being requested and what's legal and we need a mediator. So as you all know that the awesome planning development has put together a forum where they want neighborhood impact, or so my understanding would be, um, similar to this circumstance where they help educate the um, neighbors in regards 
to what actually um, these requests are being requested of and educate us in regards to that. So I am requesting that this be, I'm in opposition so it can be deferred um, until that the forum has been able to be processed and the uh, neighbors can be educated and we understand what rights we do have. Thank you very much. Sean, do we have another caller? We do have additional callers. We're working on getting the next one into the meeting now, and I'll let you know when okay. you have them. Great. Vice Chair, you have the next caller. Great, thank you. Welcome. Um, you will have two minutes. Um, please state your name and address and let us know if you are calling in favor uh, and support or opposition to this project. Thank you very much. My name is Jordan Huffman. I live at 1048 Riverwood Village Boulevard, uh, which is the main entrance here in the villages of Riverwood. And I'm calling in uh, to ask you to uh, approve this. However, I am asking for you to consider uh, a few things in regards to that. Uh, the item in question, uh, which is uh, the piece of property along Stonewater Drive to be rezoned to allow 210 multifamily uh, residential units would uh, necessarily cause a lot of traffic issues in our neighborhood. And I want to ensure that the planning commissioners are mindful of that. Our community has met with this developer uh, representing the owner of the property on a few occasions. Uh, one other concern that I have in relation to traffic is around the private streets that other callers have mentioned. Uh, along the private streets within this specific plan would potentially cause significant issues in the future for not only the new development in question, uh, but also for uh, the villages of Riverwood if the new development were to start their own homeowners association. Uh, small problem, uh, it would be taken care of, uh, such as a uh, water break, would uh, cost uh, an HOA a significant amount of money in order to make necessary uh, repairs. Uh, in closing, I will say that I'm a firm believer that development should be done for us and not to us, and I would like for you to take into consideration uh, my thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sean, we're ready for your next caller when you are. Vice Chair, you have the next caller. Great, thank you. Yeah, hi, hi, my name is uh, Nathaniel McClure. Oh, hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Nathaniel McClure, live at 1865 Stonewater Drive here in Riverwood. And I am speaking in opposition, uh, along with many of my uh, the folks in the development. Basically, I'm not going to rehash what you've already heard here, uh, but seriously concerned that uh, Mr. Dale uh, just considers all of this a rubber stamp, um, that it's going to be approved, and that uh, these are going to be eyesores that uh, there's going to be too much traffic, um, et cetera, et cetera, and um, that we, the village of, villages of Riverwood HOA uh, members, are going to be fronting the costs for amenities that are not for residents but are taken uh, advantage of by these uh, new developments. So, again, speaking in opposition to the motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sean, when you're ready, we're ready. And I think um, I, I will just wait until you tell me we don't have more callers. <laughs> Vice Chair, um, we're checking. We had someone in the queue, but we may they may have um, disconnected. Bear with us just a moment. Great, thanks.
Vice Chair, we have no additional callers for this item. Vice Chair Farr, this is Sean at the call center. Um, if you are speaking, you look like you might be muted. Um, if I just wanted to check and make sure that others could hear Goodness, you. I'm so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I was muted. Um, I was gonna say, are we waiting 30 seconds to a minute to see if we get any last callers or, or do you think we're, we're done? I think since many people were able to reach us and then we have had a pause here, I think, um, I think we have received the calls that we're gonna receive and um, you can move on when you're ready. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, so we are now uh, back to the applicant. Um, if you would like to, to use your remaining two minutes. Okay, uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. Okay, awesome. Uh, so again, this is Roy Dale. And um, as you heard, we actually had a number of community meetings. One of those meetings probably had more than 30 or 40 people. Uh, attending a Zoom meeting, so it's very. There've been there's been plenty of opportunity here. Um, the this uh, modification basically has the same conditions as the rest of the UDO, uh, as far as the garages or parking or whether it's inside parking or outside parking. Um, there is one thing that I think the the homeowners association made a very good point of, and I I, I quite honestly understand that, and that. Um, I think it was Bonnie Heiler had mentioned that they would like to have this to be a part of their HOA. And it's probably difficult for this to be part of their HOA if it has private roads or private streets. I know that that's what my client prefers, but I think that there's a way that, especially those houses that are facing stormwater are facing a public street. And uh, just like in Riverwood, many of those houses have uh, garages or parking spaces behind them on a public alley. And I really see no reason why we could not have public alleys as well. So I would not oppose a condition added that basically says that all homes that are built that face stormwater, obviously as a face, if they face a street, it has to be a public street. If they face open space, then it has to be a public alley. I think Applicant, another one you of have the, 30 seconds. Okay, that's fine. And I think that another one of the uh, people that discussed this talked about green space. This is gonna be a project that's built around open space. And it probably won't be nine units per acre just based upon the conditions of floodplain and buffers and stormwater uh, buffers as well. So I appreciate your time and hopefully that helped clarify that and will provide you good clear guidance. Thank you. Vice Chair Farr, this is Sean at the call center. You may be muted again if you're speaking. Sorry, <laughs> thought I unmuted. Um, is the council member on the line for this item? I do not see uh, the councilman here. Okay. Okay, well then with that, um, we will turn to the discussion with the commissioners. Um, and I'm going to go alphabetically just to, to get us through this first one. So, um, uh, except I don't remember. Commissioner Blackshear, are you recused on this one? No. Okay. Can I start with you? Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. Um, so, um, one, just it's awesome to see such high levels of community engagement. Um, I know there's been, I guess, comments regarding the efficacy of the meetings and maybe um, some of the meetings have been a bit disrupted or interrupted, but it's just great to see that so many people are um, just active and clearly participatory on this item. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, it, from all the reasons that were stated by staff, I mean, it looks like an appropriate item to approve the, the obvious question that was brought up a lot of times by the neighbors was the private streets piece and we clearly clearly just heard what the applicant said regarding adding a condition regarding that i did have a question for staff on that piece 
um, I guess, did that or was that a part of any of your analysis when reviewing this item and then obviously hearing the um, the applicant's uh, offer of a condition regarding the public alley and then the facing of the, the, the public alley and the public streets? I mean, does that, um, I'm just trying to make sure there are no um, unintended consequences or no effects on your impact to your analysis based on those pieces. Hi, this is Lisa uh, Milligan with Metro Planning. I think Logan got booted off again, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be jumping in to answer some questions. So um, a couple of things. So this is sort of a one step in what will in, in a process that will have another step. And so this is the modification to change the land use, but this isn't actually the point in which we are reviewing a final site plan. So in other words, there will be another final site plan that would actually include the layout of um, the units and include the access and those sorts of things. And so we have not evaluated at this point um, the layout. Uh, this is simply to change the use, um, modify it for the use from the approved six-story assisted living to the 210 townhomes. So there'll be another review for a final site plan. But, but Lisa, we would support making the public infrastructure, whether it be at this step, sorry, this is Lucy with the planning department. I forgot to identify myself. We would support making the infrastructure public. And I guess the question is if that has to happen at this phase or if it would happen at the future phase, Lisa. I think, hi, this is Lisa. I think that if it's the intent that the commission wants to see it be public, then there should be a condition that the infrastructure uh, streets or alleys be public at this stage. Okay, great. That's that's helpful. Um, okay, um, thank you both Lisa and Lucy for that. And um, I'm, I'm through with my questioning, Vice um, Chair Farr. Thank you, Commissioner Blackshear. Um, if we do want to add that commission uh, condition, I assume that we would do that when we get to the, the point of making a motion. Is that correct, yes. Director? Okay. Yes, this is Lucy with the planning department, yes. Okay, great. Uh, we will keep that in mind. Um, Commissioner Haynes. So along the same lines as Commissioner Blackshear, at the point of a final site plan review, would a traffic study be required to be submitted at that point, or is that still optional? Uh, I, I believe that so public works could determine that a site plan uh, review is required once we have that final street layout. Um, where I struggle with this, I, I know you all say that there are going to be less vehicle trips with the new proposed use versus the old assisted living use. Uh, I, I struggle with that analysis. And so I, I would love to see uh, a condition added at final site plan review that the developer and applicant has to submit a traffic study uh, with that site plan uh, to support uh, the plan itself. I think that's an appropriate condition. Lisa is losing her internet access. Um, so uh, Bob and I'll tag team on these, but I think that's an appropriate condition. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Haynes. Uh, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Vice Chair Farr. One thing I'm pleased to hear today's hearing is uh, when we heard this case uh, five months ago in October, it sounded like a comment we heard was uh, pretty much you know, like more than a mile apart. But it seems like uh, during our uh, uh, past five months, uh, there was some outreach. And although, you know, may not be enough and sometimes need more to discuss in detail. But nonetheless, uh, there was some uh, outreach and sounded like uh, some uh, detail is the uh, final uh, 
point. So in that uh, sense, uh, I would like to ask uh, probably Lisa uh, to uh, confirm. So when this, uh, this is uh, more like a regulatory, you know, uh, a UDO amendment. So applicant or, you know, developer has to uh, provide final site plan and layout and then have to be reviewed. But I'm assuming in the reviewing process, uh, public has no uh, chance to participate. Rather, the review is internal uh, departmental uh, review. Is that correct? Hi, this is Lucy with the planning department. I know you called on Lisa, but she has lost internet. And so, yes, typically site plan reviews are administrative. And then if there is a proposal um, for something that deviates from the plan, we can adjust accordingly. Thank you. So I think by having dialogue with uh, applicant and community, I think they are getting so close, but I am a little bit hesitant to approve one way or other at this point because it's getting so close and, you know, getting uh, towards working towards making it better amendment. So probably another question to uh, director is since this is a uh, UDO amendment process, if we want to defer one more time to make all the condition into this phase, I'm assuming there's no timeline uh, for this uh, amendment to be approved. Is there any timeline we are uh, abide by? This is Bob Lehman. Uh, there's no timeline on a, a UDO modification request. There's no, there's no clock ticking. Okay, thank you for the clarification. I appreciate that. Uh, for that, you know, uh, I would feel much better to ask applicant and community, possibly including, you know, district council member to uh, continue this dialogue, uh, but uh, that's only me. So that's where I am. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, Commissioner Lawson. It, um, it, as I was listening to Commissioner Johnson and the thought process, I, I think what we're doing, we're getting into a situation that does need some additional analysis before the commission makes its final decision. So, you know, I, I would think that we could defer for at least a week, if that's reasonable, it may take longer, but certainly a week uh, with specific directives to the staff as to what we want the want the developer to respond to and correct if necessary. I'll okay. go back to sleep now. <laughs> uh, Council Lady Murphy. Thank you. Um, this is Council Lady Murphy. So I I heard that um, Commissioner Haynes wanted to add like a traffic study. I wanted to check and see. Um, I may have this on the wrong case, but I was thinking there was already some sort of commission uh, condition for a traffic study. And so I wanted to ask either the developer uh, representative to respond to that or see if um, staff could discuss if that traffic study came back and said that it needed um, off-site improvements recommended or something like that, I'm assuming there's not a chance to to put that in. Or how does that work? Can we can we just hear from the applicant again about uh, if they've done the traffic study, if that's something that they are objecting to? Also, if we're calling on them, if they could speak to if we were to move to a deferral, how does that fit into the timeline? And then if staff could answer about the traffic study, if it comes back and requires any or recommends any offsite improvements, what does that look like? Um, because I, I, what I'm hearing from the community is a lot of concerns about traffic, which I totally get. And then, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling on a little bit now, but 
also a question to staff is if this switches to, um, if we're tinkering with the public private road part, uh, do we have any feedback from public works about that? So, so if we could hear from uh, Mr. Dale and then hear from staff, that would be wonderful. Okay, can I speak? You are, you are recognized. Okay, so this is Roy again, and uh, Commissioner Murphy's correct. There, there was, when, when we looked at this with the community, as I've mentioned, this UDO was put together in 2004, and it's pretty well developed. So I'm sure the traffic conditions are different today than they would have been foreseen to have been that time ago. So there was a condition added to this. It's, it's within your uh, plan today to do a traffic study and we actually pointed out a particular intersection which we felt like there may be some st stacking or turning lanes that may need to be extended so uh, i think that would answer one of your questions and then as far as deferring this there really is no i mean i've deferred this multiple times since october to have community meetings i kept having community meetings as long as even one person asked to have one so at this point i don't think doing another community meeting is beneficial. However, if staff needs time to to, you know, to to make sure that all these conditions are correct, or if you need to to sound, you know, to talk to Public Works to make sure that the traffic condition is correct, then I, I'm more than happy to do that. So that we make sure that you, that the commission, gets everything in here that the commission wants. I think the community has pretty already told you what their concerns are. I think we've already addressed those, but I'm sure that. Um, Commissioner Johnson and Commissioner Murphy and, and uh, Commissioner Haynes and actually I guess is Lawson want to make sure that the conditions are written properly. So there will be no objection for me if you need an additional meeting in order to, to make sure you've got it the way you want it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, if we can hear from staff on those things and then I've got a quick comment and I'll turn it over. Okay. This is Bob Lehman. In terms of the traffic impact study, I mean, you can definitely require one to be done at final site plan. Um, I will say when this original UDO was done, there was a traffic impact study for the whole project and the conditions could have changed in the surrounding area around there. So there, it may be beneficial to do a new one for this particular project, um, but that, in terms of what it would require, I can't say that might be something that to, if Public Works is on the line that they might be able to answer. Um, but I, was there a second part to your question that that I'm missing? I think it was, it's it's probably also a Public Works thing about the public private road issue. Um, if we're tinkering with that, if that tinkers their recommendation. So do we have a Public Works representative on the line that could put us at ease on that? Hi, yeah, this is John Bogosian of Public Works. Are you able to hear me? Yes, John, thank you. Are you interested in leading the town hall tomorrow, question mark? Um, I think Commissioner oh. Tibbs might be unmuted. <laughs> Commissioner Tibbs, are you, do you, are you unmuted? I, there you go, thank you. Um, to answer your question about the traffic study, uh, one will be required with the final UDO review the request at hand right now was just to, as, as Lisa mentioned, was just to change the, um, or to permit residential here. And based off what was planned here, which was the assisted living, um, compared to the 210 residential units, it is projected to produce less trips with, with the proposed 210 units. So a traffic study was not required right now. One will be required once a site plan is submitted, um, and we will assess offsite improvements just like we, just like we do um, for a project that comes through the building permit process. We can condition and require improvements to mitigate its traffic impact. So we'll have the ability to coordinate, just like any other typical traffic study. To your question about the public versus private roads, Public Works supports public roads in residential complexes. We just have to work with the developer um, on the intents and the design. We just want to make sure it will meet our standards. And so we, we haven't reviewed that site plan yet, but we are in support of public roads when 
when it meets our standards. Okay, great. This is Council Lady Murphy. Thank you so much, John. That that hit on some of my issues. I think you know when we heard this and had the first public hearing on it, um, I definitely was one of the voices that pushed for a deferral so there could be some more community meetings. Um, it sounds like they have had those, but I do want to make sure that we have the um, the conditions like crafted the most advantageous way for the existing residents. Um, and so if they, I, what I'm hearing from the applicant is they are okay with a one meeting deferral, maybe we close the public hearing, don't hear from either one of them next time, just hear from staff on what what the conditions were tweaked out. Um, and we go from there, because I, I, I think we're hearing the same concerns as last time. And I think the conditions that we're talking about, hopefully I think would address them. But I'm at the will of the commission. But I think I think we're on a good track with if we add those conditions and and hearing from Public Works saying that they will, you know, have the traffic study and and determine off site conditions and they can still require those at final site approval. That makes me feel a little bit better on this one. Great, thank you. Um, is that it? Any other comments, Council Lady? Sorry, I muted myself before I said thank you, I'm done. So thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Commissioner Sims? Yes, Chair. Um, I was one of those people too, unsurprisingly, that uh, wanted to have more time for the community. And I am really hesitant to get into refereeing the efficacy of those meetings. It does appear that there have been meetings, many of the letters received uh, referred to those meetings. And then of course, Mr. Dale, uh, talk to us about those. So I'm going to let that go. I'm really excited that my colleagues brought up a lot of what people have told us, both in the phone calls, but more importantly, in the huge number of letters that we received, many of them from chairs of associations. Um, and there, they actually have three concerns when I went back and really read them all and tried to really figure out what they're saying. One was about the streets. They really wanted them to be public. And I think, uh, our director's already committed to having that put in as the condition. They wanted a traffic study, and I can guarantee you, as someone that has a really good friend that lives there, that a lot it's changed tremendously from 2004, so we do need a traffic study. The other thing they talk about is green space anywhere in there. And, and of course, we're not to the final site review, but I really think that when you really look at this, there's a lot of density and not much green space. and so. Um, I, I would like to see a condition added about some type of park or some type of amenity for the neighborhood. Other than that, I'm through. Thank you, Commissioner Sims. Um, Commissioner Tibbs. Yes, um, everything has been pretty much been said that um, uh, I won't repeat. I, matter of fact, Commissioner Sims did a great job of just summarizing the three kind of major kind of items, uh, you can see that through all the meetings that a lot of resolution has been made and there's, there's still a little gap. Um, and I'd be totally supportive of making a motion, but I do know that there was some um, conditions that were uh, that have all been said and Mr. Uh, Commissioner Haynes brought up. So I would probably kick it back to him maybe to make the motion, but um, I'm in support of the where we are going and whether that be a deferral or with the conditions. So before we get to the, well, I mean, I'm wondering if uh, I've made note of at least three conditions. Um, and uh, I think we can entertain a motion, but um, maybe turning it back to staff just to make sure that we're all on the same page for what those conditions are and if the motion is a motion of approval um, or what the conditions are for a deferral. Um, I, think, so I, I think if I'm hearing you defer so that we can as staff um, add the conditions, um, it would be that we're, you know, uh, what I've heard, I'll just speak back to you, um, uh, one meeting deferral and closing the public hearing. Um, and you're directing us basically during that time period to address the, um, you know, public private roads, 
um, traffic study and open space and just to clarify, you know, the issues that we're to look at and we can report back to you is one it was one scenario. I don't think we have to be so specific since we're not if, if you go the deferral route. Um, you're really guide, telling us what to come back to you with in more specificity. If there's an approval, then I would want it to be more specific. Does that sort of make sense? Yep, that makes sense. Um, Commissioner Haynes, I will now kick it back to you if you do want to be the one to make the motion. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd love to make a motion for a one meeting deferral so staff can work out the amendments uh, and the conditions, I, I do think another condition that staff needs to look at is the request for all the homes facing the existing subdivisions to be able to join the HOA, uh, I think is an important consideration to make if possible. I, I would make a motion for a one meeting deferral for staff to work out the conditions of approval. And a closing the public hearing? And of, close, and of closing the public hearing, correct. Thank you. That is a proper motion. Is there a second? Commissioner Tibbs? I'll second that. Great, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, I will turn to the roll call vote. Um, Commissioner Blackshear? Aye. Commissioner Haynes? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Lawson? No. No? Uh, Commissioner, Council Lady Murphy? Aye. Commissioner Sims? Aye. Commissioner Tibbs? Aye. Thank you very much. Let me do my math. Okay, the motion passes 7-1. Uh, the vote is 7-1 and the chair voting with the majority. Um, okay, with that, I will uh, go on to item 24. Um, item 23, I believe. I'm sorry, uh, item sure. 23. And Commissioner Haynes, to give you a heads up, I'm going to try to get through one more. If my power and internet does not return after that, then I may be coming to you to pick up the remaining items. But we'll do our best. I'm here when you need me. Okay, thank you. Okay, item 23. Hi, everyone. This is Amelia Lewis with the Planning Department. Can you guys hear me okay? We can, thank you. Thanks. Um, so item 23, again, this is Amelia Lewis with the planning department, and I will be presenting uh, this item tonight. Next slide, please. Uh, the request is to rezone from commercial limited and residential single family to specific plan zoning to permit a mixed use development. Next slide, please. Staff's recommendation is to approve with conditions. Uh, next slide, please. If you are thinking that this case looks familiar, you would not be wrong. Um, we did hear it at the February 25th uh, Planning Commission hearing. Um, the motion at this hearing was to defer and reopen the public hearing. Um, I'd like to apologize. The previously published agenda had identified um, the public hearing as closed, um, which was incorrect, and the public hearing is open. Um, so. The item was presented um, in February, and after comments received by members of the public and neighborhood leadership, um, the item was deferred to give the applicant team additional time to meet with the community. Uh, the applicant team has done this, um, and they have added some additional details to the plan uh, that the community and commissioners had concerns and questions on. So we will run through the site plan um, briefly again and address the new um, uh, elements of the plan. Next slide, please. Okay, so the site is highlighted on the screen in gray. Um, as I previously mentioned, it's on commercial and residential single family. 
Um, so what you'll also see here is that on the um, northern portion of the site, the site has frontage along Gatewood Avenue. Um, and along the western portion of the site, um, the site has frontage along Dickerson Pike. Next slide, please. Um, and here's just the aerial for the site, so you can really see the depth of the properties there, um, as well as the street frontage um, of the um, proposed SP. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so the proposed plan, um, site plan is shown on the screen. Um, there weren't a lot of changes made um, to kind of the layout um, of the previously approved plan, but I'll still run through that um, just so everyone um, gets a little bit of a refresher. Um, so the proposed SP would be limited to a maximum of 270 residential units um, across the whole site, as well as 10,000 um, 10, square feet of non-residential uses. Um, those residential uses, non-residential uses would be limited um, to the building frontage um, along Dickerson Pike. Um, the development on the site is distributed in five buildings across the site. Um, so starting at the northern portion of the site um, with the frontage along Gatewood Avenue, um, we have a proposed entrance into the site. Um, this is a proposed public road that would extend um, north-south through the site, um, aligning with the existing Luton Street on the north side of Gatewood Avenue. So buildings A and B up here are um, three, four split buildings. Um, given the topography of the site, um, it really steps um, into the height there um, but prevents, uh, that presents three stories um, along the corridors and really wraps the um, existing and proposed public streets. Um, we move further into the site um, further south and we have two additional um, residential four-story buildings. Um, again, these are intended to have frontage along the um, proposed public road. Um, moving over to the west portion of the site, we have this L-shaped building. Um, there's another entrance that you'll see here um, at the southwest corner um, of the site that provides uh, vehicular access into the site. Um, so this building up here um, is proposed mixed-use six-story building. Um, the, this is, this would be the only building permitted to have uh, non-residential uses. Um, and that's kind of reflected in the district one and the district two that you see on the screen. Um, and that's just primarily to distinguish, um, between the, the mixed use and the completely residential portions of the site. Um, so three of kind of the key points from the last hearing um, and things that have been addressed since then is one, the active use zone, which you'll see in orange um, on that L-shaped building along Dickerson Pike. Um, and so the requirements for that portion of the site um, have been changed um, or modified um, to create what they're calling an active use priority zone. Um, meaning that it would be, there would be a minimum of 2,000 square feet um, of active uses within that area. So that um, was previously kind of identified as what we call flex space, and now it's been um, modified to have that requirement there along the street frontage. The second one is the demonstration with the Metro Parking Code. Um, so this site plan, as you'll see, does not have um, the specific count um, this is a requirement that is a uh, condition to be counted at final. Um, this is just to reflect kind of the changing parking requirements of both the number of units um, as well as the, the retail tenant or the non-residential use that's established in that active use zone. Um, so the applicant met with the community and updated their plan to really show um, kind of different variations of how those parking numbers would shape out um, and um, they would, of course, have to meet code um, with the final SP. Um, the third one is uh, some enhanced landscaping requirements. So they increase the caliper of trees that would be required on the site 
um, as well as um, the use of native, native plantings throughout the site. Um, next slide, please. Um, so the site is highlighted um, in red on the screen. The policy um, for the site is T4 Urban Neighborhood Evolving as well as T4 Urban Mixed Use Corridor. Um, the neighborhood evolving is shown in the light purple and that's really to create um, residential um, neighborhoods at an urban level. Um, the mixed use corridor policy is shown um, along Dickerson, the corridor, um, and it is shown with the kind of slanted hash pattern there. And that's really to enhance um, the mixed use corridor um, by providing for um, the allowance of non-residential as well as residential uses. Um, so in addition to these policies, the site is also located within the Highland Heights um, and Dickerson South study area. So we'll take a look at um, the Highland Heights um, plan in the next slide. Next slide, please. So the site is shown um, kind of circled in with the black. Uh, so as you're probably aware, the Highland Heights plan was completed after an extensive community engagement process. Um, and was adopted into the Dickerson South study as well. Uh, this plan created a building regulating plan as well as a mobility plan um, for the area that's shown on the screen. Um, and this established subdistricts and provided specific guidance on the types, the heights, um, as well as some mobility goals for the area. Um, next slide, please. Um, so the, the, ooh, the site is shown on the uh, left of the screen. Um, and so the subdistrict is in two. Um, the first subdistrict is the R5 subdistrict, which is shown in that orange. Um, and then we have the M2 subdistrict um, in the, the dark purple color. Um, so the building regulating plan that's shown on the screen um, shows the R5 and the M2 districts circled and kind of the appropriate building type um, for those sub-districts. And those include low-rise townhomes, flats, as well as taller mixed-use buildings in that M2, which is more intense along the corridor. Um, next slide, please. Um, so breaking down those districts, and just to give a quick rundown, um, so we have the R5 district, um, which is up against uh, Gatewood Avenue and in the residential um, policy. Um, so this uh, plan kind of identifies the heights. Um, we generally see um, a lower height, um, but still that um, multifamily appropriate building type. Um, and this is more intended to be a more residential portion of the site as well as the subdistrict that it's in. And next slide, please. And in the M2 district, which is the portion of the site that's located along Dickerson Pike, um, we see more intensity, more mix of uses um, with a maximum building height of up to six stories. Um, next slide, please. So another component of the Highland Heights plan was the mobility plan, um, which established um, new roads and alleyways that would help connect, create connections throughout this neighborhood. Um, and so you'll see the site highlighted in red on the screen. Um, and the line that goes through it is the proposed extension of Luton Street, which is um, shown on the proposed SP plan as well. Um, next slide, please. Given the consistencies with the policies, as well as the Highland Heights plan, um, including the local street connection, uh, staff recommends approval with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Um, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you so much. Um, with that, we will go to public hearing. And, uh, and we are reopening the public hearing, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, is the applicant is the applicant on the line? Uh, yes. 
You're here. Great. Scott Morgan. Um, hi, Scott. You will have 10 minutes, and you um, are welcome to uh, hold back two for rebuttal. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening, Planning Commissioners. This is Scott Morton with Smith G Studio, uh, 1005 North 14th Street in uh, East Nashville. Uh, first of all, I want to sincerely thank the staff, the community, and Councilman Parker for their efforts and engagement with this application. Over the last eight months, we've worked diligently with the stakeholders to come up with a plan that is consistent with the community's policy and provides for an engaging public realm, high quality architecture, and a contextually appropriate design most fitting for this prominent site on the Dickerson Corridor. Over the course of these eight months, the project team has hosted multiple community meetings and has worked diligently with Highland Heights Neighborhood Association and its current board president, Mr. Gordon Stacy Harmon. This engagement has provided valuable input for the project design, and we've responded and provided changes to the design based on this direct uh, interaction with the community. Our case was deferred at the last planning commission meeting so that we could respond to additional feedback we received from the community. I'm proud to say that we have resolved the remaining concerns presented to us and have worked with the community over the last four weeks to revise our plans, uh, reflecting their changes and providing the clarifications that they requested. Specifically, we've addressed three additional areas of specific concern. Number one, the uh, provide an active use commitment. The SP permits up to 10,000 square feet of active and commercial uses at the ground level of the Dickerson Pike frontage. The community desired um, a commitment um, for that. And so therefore we have added a provision that will require a minimum active use requirement along the Dickerson frontage, ensuring that that remains uh, a very active and vibrant uh, ground level experience. Number two was parking clarifications. Uh, as mentioned, the community wanted to better understand how the parking would be allocated between the residential and commercial uses and really to ensure that adequate parking is provided at the end of the day uh, to provide parking on site and that overflow parking would not spill out into the community. Um, we are obviously committed to fully requirement, full requirements on parking metro standards at final site plan, as well as adhering to addressing market demand for the proposed uses. And lastly, number three, enhanced landscape standards. This was uh, one of the requests from the council member to strengthen the landscape requirements for the development. We have proposed the following additional regulations. Um, we've increased the density of the spacing of the required street trees. We've also increased the minimum size of street trees uh, from the metro standard to um, a three inch caliper tree, which is provides for a larger, healthier, and a better chance of survival uh, for those very important street trees. Additionally, we are pr prioritizing the use of native plants throughout the landscape areas uh, in the site. Beyond all of this, the team is committed and shall continue working with the community throughout the remaining process. As mentioned, this property is located within the Highland Heights small area plan. A high level of guidance and design direction provided within the special policy was extremely helpful in assisting us in creating our SP application. The SP application mirrors the special policy recommendations with our proposed regulations and standards across the board. One key feature of the Highland Heights policy was the recommendation of a new north-south spine street through the middle of the site, providing a much needed connection from Gatewood Avenues to Marie Streets. Our team worked diligently with Metro Planning and Public Works staff to make sure this roadway was properly designed and provided for in the SP application per the policy's recommendations. Furthermore, the project addresses many key policy aspects and goals, including providing a balance of residential and commercial land uses, enhancing the community by providing greater housing choices, improving connectivity in the community, uh, both to and from the site with new infrastructure, the new roadway uh, and surrounding connection, connections, providing best management stormwater strategies and sensitive development techniques, providing a high quality, quality public realm and walkable environment through significant right-of-way dedication and new sidewalks throughout the entire site. 
An investment in new utility infrastructure systems um, and increased capacity for this growing development corridor, which is much needed. The policy subdistrict supports medium to high density for this area and with a recommended range of around 15 units per acre on the low end to 40 units per acre on the high end. The site is currently uh, well within the recommended policy density thresholds at 25 units per acre with the uh, proposed plan, assuming our maximum allowed residential density. The element of this project at the edge of the Highland Heights community and along the district's most prominent commercial spine will really help absorb market share in the area, hopefully relieving some development pressures in the heart of Highland Heights and providing much needed activity on the Dickerson Corridor. Despite the challenging topography and unique shape of the site, the design engages both Gatewood Avenue, Dickerson Pike, and the new North-South Spine Road. Dickerson Pike will be activated with storefronts for neighborhood retail and restaurants. The dedication of additional right-of-way along both streets will help transform what is now a heavily automobile-oriented area into a high-quality public realm experience. The proposed design enhances the pedestrian experience along the corridor and provides new connectivity to and from the site. Front stoops are provided between the building and the street throughout the site. Um, the site also includes several residential amenities with a new clubhouse, pool, fitness center, and many others. A robust sidewalk network is provided between all the buildings and all the roadways to create an interconnected and walkable community. Small plazas and urban green parklets are provided at street intersections and throughout the development. Lastly, both owner-occupied and non-owner-occupied short-term rental properties are prohibited within this application. Per the approved traffic study, the project will make many off-site traffic improvements that will benefit and improve the overall network within the Highland Heights community. Combination of the proposed design solutions and SP regulations results in the most appropriate building form for the property that fully takes into consideration the existing context, policy goals, and objectives. In closing, we sincerely appreciate the support and engagement we have received from the community, neighbors, Councilman Parker, and Metro staff. We greatly appreciate your consideration and kindly request that you support staff's recommendation of approval. I'll gladly stay on to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, Sean was tracking the time, and um, I, I believe you'll still have your two minutes for a rebuttal at the end. Um, with that, I would like to go ahead and open up um, the public hearing. Um, Sean, do we have any callers on the line for this item? Vice Chair, this is Sean Shepard at the call center. We don't currently have any callers on the line, um, but as we've, we've just opened it, we might want to give a little time um, for them to reach us just in case they're trying before we move on. Okay. Um, do we, did we, while we're waiting, did we get any, um, and, and I realize this is normally Lisa, um, but did we get any uh, emails in support or opposition to this item? Hi, Vice Chair Farr, this is Lisa Milligan. I have Hi. made make it back onto the meeting. Um, okay. We, we did receive several emails. We received four emails in support and we received one email um, requesting a deferral uh, that, that happened at the last meeting. It was prior to the last meeting requesting a deferral, which then took place. Okay, great. And Sean, I apologize. I forgot my, my script for the beginning of the time when people can call in. Um, so we'll give it another minute. That's fine, Vice Chair. I'll kind of keep an eye on a timer and check back in with you in, in just a few. Okay, thank you.
Vice Chair, this is Sean at the call center. We've had a pretty good pause here and we don't have any callers for this item. Great, thank you. Um, then I will turn it back to the applicant if you would like to reserve, use your remaining two minutes um, for any kind of rebuttal. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, okay. I appreciate it very much. No problem. And I do see Councilman uh, Parker on the line. Would you like to speak now on this item? Yes, hi, this is uh, Council Member Parker. Um, thank you, commissioners, for uh, recognizing me. Um, so I, uh, as you know, you know, we had some lingering concerns and questions about this one at the at the February uh, 25th meeting, and some folks had requested a deferral. So I appreciate the commission doing that to give um, our community a little bit more time to look at this. Um, I think that we've made some improvements um, in the plan and just through the process of having a little bit more community engagement. Uh, I think that some of the, the lingering concerns um, around, you know, things like delivery vehicles and and parking, while not entirely resolved, I think that the, the neighbors who did share those concerns um, have a much better understanding of of what we're likely to see in a final site plan. So I definitely appreciate the uh, the applicant for kind of doing that that additional round of engagement with the community on this. And um, I would uh, I, I would like to lend my support to this this evening. And um, I would ask that the commission consider approving this. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, with that, I will I will turn to the discussion with the commissioners and Commissioner Haynes. Would you like to get us started? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, I really think this is a fabulous plan, and I think it's going to serve to be a catalyst um, for future development along this very important pike in our city. Um, I do encourage Smith G, whom I have a lot of confidence in, and the applicant and staff upon the final SP getting the sharing of parking, the uh, delivery vehicles, the trash pickup, uh, all in district one, including takeout food, which during COVID has become very critical. Uh, I would encourage y'all to focus on district one, especially during the final SP for all of those important details. I will support staff's recommendation. Thank you, Commissioner Haynes. Um, next up, we have Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Vice Chair. Um, I would like to uh, thank uh, Councilman Parker uh, for taking a lead to facilitate uh, community engagement. And I am very pleased to hear you know, uh, those collaborative visioning sessions uh, resulted a much better uh, outcome. You know, uh, SP like this is uh, in this stage, it's uh, more like uh, have to use a lot of imagination. And sometimes one may, you know, visualize one picture and then we'll have more concern or unknown. So, you know, by carry out discussion and engagement, the end result becomes really great. And I think, you know, this is a great uh, product in this specific uh, area. And I'm so pleased to see all the policy work finally uh, become the reality. And I would like to thank, you know, applicant as well as the community and our staff members to make you know, bringing uh, those uh, great product uh, accordance with the policy. I am uh, in support. Thank you so much, Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Lawson. Uh, there's nothing really I can add to this conversation other than I think that it is, staff recommendation is, is uh, very appropriate. And uh, at the appropriate time, I would move for a motion to approve staff recommendations. Thank you so much, Commissioner Lawson. Uh, Council Lady Murphy. Thank you. Um, I think that this uh, has has 
come a long way. These are projects that they have a lot of details and the devil is definitely in the details. Um, but it sounds like uh, concerns were taken care of and with Councilman Parker's um, support of it, then I am all right with it. Great, thank you so much, Council Lady Murphy. Um, we are on to Commissioner Sims. The only thing I want to thank, I just want to make sure that Mr. Morton, our Councilman Parker, and the neighborhood leaders, this is such an exemplar. And every now and then you realize, wow, this is the joy of serving on the commission. So thank you for the hard work and truly being an exemplar for other people that are trying to work through sometimes very uh, divergent goals. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Tibbs, I think you are our last one. I will second Commissioner Lawson's motion. Okay, well, let's uh, let me go back to Commissioner Lawson and ask him to make a official motion. Official motion is to approve the staff recommendation. Great, thank you. That's a proper motion and Commissioner Tibbs has seconded it. Any discussion? If not, then, oh my goodness, Commissioner Blackshear, I forgot you unless you were, um, unless you're recused on this one. No, I'm sorry. A, no, I, I really didn't have anything to add. It was all stolen. So um, I'm, I'm also in favor. Okay, so sorry. I, I need to stick in the same order. I get confused. Um, okay, well, with that, then I will start with a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Blackshear. Aye. Commissioner Haynes. Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Lawson? Commissioner Lawson? I'm here. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. Uh, Council Lady Murphy? Aye. Commissioner Sims? Aye. And Commissioner Tibbs? Aye. Great. Motion passes eight to zero. Um, all right, we are on to our next item, which is item 24. Madam Vice Chair. Yes. I, I've got to step away for about 20 minutes. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, so we, I think we're still okay for um, a quorum, correct, Director? I think we have seven. Yes, we are fine with the quorum. Okay. Okay, well, let's proceed to item 24. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Amelia Lewis with the Planning Department presenting item number 24, um, which is a proposed SP in the Wedgwood Houston area. Um, next slide, please. Um, the request is to rezone um, from a variety of existing zoning districts, including commercial, industrial, and mixed use, um, to SP to permit a mixed use development. Um, next slide, please. Staff's recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Next slide, please. Um, so, as I mentioned, the site has several existing zoning districts, including commercial, industrial warehousing, and mixed use. Um, the site is shown um, on the screen in gray, and um, it's about 6.12 acres um, across a couple of different streets, um, but mostly a cohesive boundary. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so, here's another kind of aerial look at the site. Um, and in the presentation, um, as well as in the previously published staff report, um, I'll refer to a site A and a site B. Um, so site A is north of Humphrey Street. Humphrey Street bisects the SP boundary. Um, and so everything south of Humphrey Street would be site B. Um, next slide, please. Um, so the proposed plan is shown on the screen. Um, I'll go ahead and break down the two, uh, site, site A and Site B, um, but here is kind of a whole look at the six-acre site. Um, you can see here that Humphrey Street runs east-west through the site. We have Martin Street on the west side of the site running north and south, um, as well as Brown Street, which is about mid-site, 
um, and has more of a presence along um, Site A, um, as well as the existing alleyways that uh, connect and lead into the site. Um, so the proposed SP would permit a maximum of 429 residential units um, with a maximum floor area across the whole site um, of um, 2.5 um, bar, which would permit roughly 650,000 square feet of development. Um, next slide, please. Um, so just a quick look at Site A. Um, we have three four-story um, buildings proposed for the site. Um, buildings A and B um, are shown as residential, and building C is intended for office use. Um, the building frontages along Humphrey Street, Houston Street, and Brown Street um, feature a 15-foot setback on the fourth floor, which really steps back that height into the site um, and creates, um, tries to minimize the canyon effect along um, the street frontages. Um, all buildings with frontage along public streets are intended to have retail along the ground floors. Um, and we see um, Humphrey Street along the southern um, portion of the, the site here, as well as Martin Street, Houston Street, and Brown Street circling the site. Um, next slide, please. Um, so here we go to Site B, which is south of Humphrey Street. You'll see Humphrey Street on the north of the site. Um, site B has five buildings, um, D, E, F, G, and H, um, ranging in height from four stories to six stories. Um, following the descriptions of the buildings and their proposed uses as we move from west uh, to east. Um, building D with frontage along Martin Street is a six-story office building. Um, we have building um, E and F, which are both proposed to be a five-story office building and a residential building. Um, and moving to buildings G and H on the furthest eastern portion of the site, um, we have four-story uh, residential building. Um, so a unique kind of feature of this site is um, the existing uh, Merritt Mansion is located um, on the site. The proposed SP would relocate the Merritt Mansion um, to where you see it in kind of the center of the site. Um, a proposed area called the Great Lawn um, would be the new home to the Merritt man Mansion and kind of the focal point um, of this site. Um, you can see a private drive that leads down from Humphreys and circles all of the buildings. Um, like Site A, um, all of the buildings with frontage along um, public streets and private drives are intended to have um, those residential mixed use um, or sorry, non-residential uses um, to really create the activation along the street frontages. Um, and so we see here um, just some additional things to point out is the height variation. Um, we have buildings stepping down in height to uh, create that focal point um, along the Great Lawn, um, as well as, again, along the streets to really create that height difference. Um, garage access um, points are located um, on the western side of building F and the eastern side of building G um, in a new proposed alley. Um, so those are kind of the central vehicular access points into the site um, and there are structured parking uh, located in um, the structures. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the site is located, um, or the policy on the site is T4 Urban Mixed Use Neighborhood Policy, um, as well as a small portion of conservation policy. Um, so the majority of the site is that T4 Urban Mixed Use Neighborhood Policy, which is um, intended to do, uh, as the name says, is really create a residential density um, with a mix of uses, so residential, non-residential, um, and um, provide um, uh, access for a lot of different services to the surrounding area as well. Um, next slide, please. So the site is also located within the Wedgwood Houston Chestnut Hill um, small area plan, which established supplemental policies, which gives more direct um, guidance um, for different districts depending on where they're located in Wedgwood Houston. Um, so the site uh, is shown kind of under the star um, there. And so this is located in character area one. 
um, which contains a mix of uses in line with the policy. Um, and it's intended in the future to become um, more residential as well as also um, retaining some of the um, artisan and maker uses as well as providing for um, more uh, retail opportunities um, in that dense walkable neighborhood community. Um, next slide, please. Um, so looking here at the character area and subdistricts and the building typologies. Um, so again, the subdistrict kind of provides guidance on what type of structures we'd like to see um, in the supplemental policy. Um, so here um, I've highlighted the first row, which is subdistrict one. Um, and we really see a consistent height here of three to four stories um, ranging in units from uh, manor houses up to mixed use and industrial buildings, as well as live work, stack flats, townhomes. Um, and so the unique feature about this uh, subdistrict is that it permits additional height um, with the um, provision for other criteria. And these criteria are listed um, along uh, the right side of the screen. And those include providing active uses and enhanced streetscaping, um, combined with adaptive reuse of other parts of the site, um, accompanied by urban industrial uses, and uh, the site is located in lower lying areas. Um, next slide, please. Um, so as you'll recall, um, the heights um, on the plan vary um, from four to five to six stories. Um, and where we really see that height above four stories is in site B, um, which is south of Humphrey Street and on the lower portion of the screen. Um, so one, providing active uses um, along the streets with enhanced streetscaping. Um, we really see here the purple blocks are intended to show um, retail spaces um, on the ground floor. So you really see the, the presence um, and prominence of retail located along all of the street frontages, as well as the private drive um, that looks over into the Great Lawn. Um, secondly, looking at the combined adaptive reuse, um, in this case, the preservation and relocation of the Merritt Mansion to the Great Lawn. And third, accompanied by urban industrial uses. So all of these um, retail spaces, um, or not all of them, but a majority of them are provided um, on the ground floor, and they will be designed to easily accommodate customer facing maker and artisan spaces. Um, and lastly, located in lower lying areas. Um, next slide, please. So essentially with the height, um, we transition from six stories to five stories to four stories, stepping with the grade there. Um, and so I think from the top image there of the cross section, you can really see the Merritt Mansion in the center located in between the two trees and how the buildings on either side, um, given the topography, even though they're slightly higher, they actually kind of create like an even um, height across the whole property. Um, and you can see that in the um, second second cross section as well, is that even with the height um, and the kind of lower level parking, um, the site transitions with the buildings, or the buildings transition with the site, I guess, um, and create kind of um, an even plateau, even if there's additional height beyond um, what is intended, um, because they took advantage of those other conditions um, in the subdistrict. Next slide, please. Um, so the applicants did not provide um, building elevations at this point. They did, however, provide character imagery, um, which I've shown a selection of on the screen. Um, and this SP has many architectural standards incorporated into the plan, um, glazing, modulation, building materials, um, to help achieve the designs that you're seeing on the screen here. Um, and as you'll know, it's kind of an urban industrial um, appearance from all of these, as well as having those prominent displays um, located at street level. Um, next slide, please. Um, given the consistency with the policy, um, the intentional addressing of the 
uh, supplemental policy as well. Um, staff recommends approval with conditions and disapproval without all conditions. Um, that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Am I unmuted? Yes, thank you very much. Um, I will go ahead and turn it over to the applicant. Is the applicant on the line? We're here. Great, you will have 10 minutes. I'm sure you know the drill, you'll have 10 minutes um, and please start with your name and address. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jack Richmond. I live at 348 Harrison Street um, and I work with the developer AJ Capital. Uh, thank you for having us here today. Um, We've been working in this neighborhood since 2015 uh, on the May Hosiery project. It was our first phase of, of development in the neighborhood. Um, at May Hosiery, we've been able to uh, adaptively reuse the oldest sock mill in the South, uh, dating back to 1908. There's six buildings there, uh, 180,000 square feet of office, retail, restaurant, and hotel uses, and have been able to uh, preserve and protect those those classic buildings that are part of the, the sock mills history. Um, our phase two project in the neighborhood is what we call Nashville Warehouse Company. That's new construction uh, across the street at 4th and Chestnut, uh, about 200,000 square feet of commercial space there and these uh, three timber office buildings, as well as residential um, a residential component and uh, about an acre of green space. Um, and at that site, we've been able to uh, relocate the iconic Greer, Street, uh, Greer Stadium uh, guitar-shaped scoreboard. And that's recently gone up on the site there if you're in the neighborhood. And so for this project, phase three, um, we're excited to build on the first two phases of our development work in the neighborhood and add another uh, mixed-use component with the adaptive reuse and uh, historic features similar to, to May Hosiery through the, through the preservation and restoration of the historic Merritt Mansion. Um, that's really the centerpiece of this project which we will be relocating um, slightly and, and facing Brown Street uh, on a great lawn of about two acres that is intended for public use and uh, permanent green space for, for residents of the neighborhood and the, and the city. Um, we, we plan to host neighborhood events there, have, a, have community programming, including farmers markets and art fairs and participate in the art crawl, um, really take advantage of the walkability of the, of the neighborhood and the site and build on the existing uh, character and charm of the, of the Wedgwood Houston neighborhood. Um, our, we've been working on this project for uh, about a year, uh, including uh, several meetings with SNAP, uh, incorporating feedback from our council member. Um, and we're really excited to, to bring this vibrant mixed use project to life. Um, we've gotten multiple letters of support from, from neighborhood residents, businesses, um, and community members. And um, not only do we work on these projects here, but we actually moved our office, our company headquarters to the neighborhood. So we're, we're living, breathing um, in this community every day. Um, as we move forward with this, we're really excited to, to present it and, and create another project with opportunities to live, work, eat, drink, shop, and enjoy Wage with Houston. Um, we'd like to, uh, I'd like to introduce the, our team here who's been working on all three phases and continue to work on this project has been working together for the past several years in the neighborhood. Uh, in addition to our internal team, we're working with uh, Barge Cawthon and AKCI locally, um, and our architects are Nick Dryden and HPA, um, Hart Hartshorn Plunkard uh, architects. So with that, I will pass it over to Mike with HPA. Good evening all, and thanks to Amelia for her uh, eloquent presentation and Jack for the introduction. Again, my name is Michael Hines from Hartford Plunkett Architecture. We're based in Chicago, Illinois, but really have been working extensively with the Nashville-based design team he mentioned, including Dryden Studio, Barge Coffin Associates, Hodgson Douglas Landscape Architects, and KCI. Um, given the extensive presentation that's already gone, I'll, I'll keep our comments relatively brief. Um, we we really ha have come to love this neighborhood. I think it's a, it's it's growing and, and evolving quickly, but I, I think it's unique and with a ton of character and. And we're excited to, to introduce this. I think for us, when we started looking at the site plan, really the main the main piece of it was how, what do we you know how do we how do we preserve how do we establish the Merritt Mansion as the center of the site? So we 
you know, knowing that we wanted to open it up to the public, we worked on how we would extend that into the into the urban grid or the remainder of the neighborhood, um, centering it on Humphreys and retaining its location at the top end of the hill, uh, and fronting it with this great lawn, similar in scale to what we have, uh, what it has at its, exi- at its existing property. Uh, retaining the existing trees, we thought honored uh, the history of the mansion and provided it the prominence that it deserved in this neighborhood. Um, Overall, between the Great Lawn and the smaller pedestrian walkways on the north side, um, we're, we're providing almost two acres of open public space as part of the 6.8 or 6.1 acre development, roughly 30 percent of the um, of the area that we're kind of giving back and, and providing for public access, which we think is a really strong strong benefit to the project. Um, the other item here, I think that that is of overall community benefit, is the, locating the parking below grade which allows us to really activate the ground floor um, at the street frontages and the interior of the private drive, as highlighted by Amelia. Uh, we're proposing over around 100,000 square feet of active ground floor retail space, and this extends into the pedestrian areas of the site. And the variety and the variety of access and scale and frontage gives us a lot of opportunities to provide uh, accommodations for a variety of retail tenants, and including um, is really maker maker spaces and artisan frontage um, that has been critical both in the community guidelines and uh, in our conversations with SNAP so far today. Um, overall, we I think are really excited about our communication and coordination with um, both the planning staff, with the historic staff, Metro Public Works staff, in addition to the integral feedback we've received from the community and from Councilman Sledge. Um, we really look forward to working with all of them in the future and intend to be actively engaged with all parties as we as we continue development of the project. Um, so thank everyone for their time today, and our full team is available here to answer any questions or comments you may have. So thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Well, we will um, go ahead and reserve, uh, I think, the two minutes for rebuttal. Sean has been paying attention to the time, so she'll be able to... Um, she will be able to uh, tell you the, the full amount. Um, with that, uh, I think we will go ahead and um, open it up to take calls from members of the public who wish to call in. Um, and for those viewers at home, um, your screen should now show the call-in number. And if you want to call in on this item, please make sure that you go ahead and start now. You don't have to wait until others have called in or have finished speaking because you'll be placed into a queue. Um, and as a reminder, please only call on this current case. When you begin your testimony, please state your name, your address, and whether you support or oppose the item. Since we're not able to display a timer visually, Sean will be keeping track of time and she will give you a 30 second warning when your time is nearly up. Um, she will also let you know when your time is up so that we can get disconnect and move on to the next caller. So while we wait for our first caller to get into the queue, Lisa, did we get any emails on this item? If you're able to come join us again. Hi, yes, we received um, 21 emails in support. We had originally received an email from SNAP um, in opposition and asking for deferrals. And they sent, sent another letter that they are okay with it moving forward at this time. Okay, great. Thank you. So only that was the only one in opposition. Correct. Or preliminary opposition. Okay, thanks. Sean, do we have any callers on this item? Vice Chair, uh, no callers at this time, so we'll take a brief pause and I'll check back in. Great, thank you. Vice Chair, we have no callers in the queue for this item. Okay. Um, well, then I will go back to the applicant if uh, you have any interest in, in using your final two minutes. No, thank you. Okay, great. Um, I don't see Councilman Sledge on the call, on the phone. Um, uh, Director, do, am I missing anything? 
I don't think he's here. No, if I recall at the last meeting, he said he was not going to be available at, at this meeting. Oh, yeah. But he is okay. not on the call. Okay, great. Well, with that, then I will go ahead and um, turn to the com discussion with the commissioners. Um, Commissioner Johnson, I, can we start with you? Sure, Vice Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -uh. I think this is a very ambitious and exciting uh, project. And I do appreciate, you know, there are several things I like about this uh, uh, project, but uh, most of all, I do appreciate preservation of merit mansion and intend to register a national register of historic place. Uh, that's a really wonderful plan. And although, you know, relocation makes me a little bit nervous, but I'm sure with uh, current technology and, you know, careful execution, uh, it can be done and it will be a great showcase for this uh, project. And another thing I like about this uh, project is uh, recognizing existing mature trees and intent uh, to preserve those. Uh, those intent are really great. And so I really appreciate the effort and also, you know, working with the community and incorporate a suggestion and so forth into this uh, great uh, plan. One thing makes me a little bit nervous is uh, the condition about uh, traffic and a parking concept. Uh, the comment from Public Works is a uh, current plan has inadequate path of travel due to uh, on-street parking. So I'm not sure how the applicant will, you know, uh, plan to overcome uh, those conditions. So I will be, you know, interested to see how the plan will develop uh, going forward between now and final uh, plan. But other than that, uh, I think overall, uh, this is a great plan. Great, thank you, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Johnson. Um, I believe that uh, Commissioner Lawson has stepped away. So Council Lady Murphy. Thank you. I, um, I agree with the comments that Commissioner Johnson said. I think this project seems really neat, um, and it's there. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on here, um, and a lot of change coming to this area. But I think that the fact that we don't have um, a lot of letters and call-ins um, against this speaks really to the the thought-out nature of it, and and the community input, and and that sort of thing. I, but I will, I, it is a little worrisome that there is so much going on at one time um, that, that I, I, but I, I feel confident that our controls are in place to make sure that, that the plan is carried out. I do appreciate the great lawn, but again, um, you know, rather than sometimes some things that's, I guess a trigger for me because I'm a council member is like to say, we're giving that back to the community. I mean, it, it, it is something that enhances your project. Let's just be honest, that is a good selling point. Um, and so uh, it does sell me on this project, but let's be very clear that it benefits you just as much as it benefits the community. So um, I'm open to hearing other comments. Great, thank you very much, Council Lady Murphy. Um, Commissioner Sims. Yes, I'm here. Um, okay. I pay a lot of attention to what neighborhoods pay, uh, really want, and particularly associations, and SNAP is one of our oldest in the city. It's over 40 years old, and it takes quite seriously really representing the voice of the neighborhood and really trying to take care of the neighborhood. And when they wrote a letter actually saying that they were really like this project, and while there's still room for improvement, that they actually believe the AJ Capital uh, responses were uh, well-intended and really move the, uh, forward. So when you have somebody like SNAP change their mind, that's well done. I like the plan. Um, my only question is we're getting ready to rezone the whole area uh, to, uh, or to uh, actually do the different kind of UDO. Um, why are we bringing this before that? I guess that's a Lisa question, but. Hi, hi, Commissioner Sims. This is Lisa. This is outside of the area of the UDO. Oh, okay, thank you. That was easy. Okay, thanks. 
I just thought it was a whole area looking at this map, so thank you. Okay, is that it, Commissioner Sims? Yes, I just am excited that the neighborhood, that, that the developer worked close enough that the whole neighborhood through SNAP actually got on board. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Tibbs. Commissioner Tibbs, are you here? Talking there you away. are. Talking away. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, it's a very ambitious, um, uh, you know, development, I guess you could almost say, or you could say, um, and because of the fact that the community has not, um, you know, openly expressed or publicly expressed uh, any you know, uh, anything contrary, I, I'm, you know, well pleased on how it's moved forward. It's, it's, it's a great concept. It's a, it's a lot of work. And, um, and so I, but I really don't have anything negative to say about it based off of, uh, everything I've heard today. So, uh, I think commissioner Blackshear is next, so I won't make a motion, but I'm in support of it. Great. Thank you. Commissioner Blackshear. Unless you're recused. Yes, I am actually recused on this one. So um, okay. feel free, Commissioner Tibbs. No, I still, wait, wait, wait. I gotta keep you guys in order. We still have Commissioner Haynes. Okay. <laughs> so Commissioner I wanna Haynes. remind, thank you, Vice Chair. I wanna remind my fellow commissioners, um, while everyone talks about mixed use being easy, uh, mixed use is very complicated, and this developer has lived in this neighborhood since 2015 to gain experience. The diversity of product, the diversity of height, diversity of building type, the keeping the Merritt Mansion and moving it to a great lawn, and even though Council Lady Murphy talks about the, 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 the great lawn is going to benefit them, very few developers in our city will give 30% of their land area uh, to open space. So I, I think this is a fabulous plan. I think AJ Capital is a, a very experienced developer who can execute this. And our city needs more of this. What we have learned during COVID is that well thought out, mixed use, walkable, pedestrian friendly plans have fared better during COVID. And I think this is gonna be a great addition for our city. So I will make a motion to approve staff's recommendation. Well, that is a proper motion. And Commissioner Tibbs, would you like to second that? Yes, I second that. Great. Um, well, with that, is there, if there is not any other discussion, I will go ahead with a roll call vote. Looking to see any other hands raised. Okay, um, Commissioner Haynes. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Uh, Council Lady Murphy? Aye. Commissioner Sims? Aye. And Commissioner Tibbs? Aye. Great. The motion carries uh, seven to zero. Um, Okay, Commissioner Haynes, if it is okay with you, I still have no power and I'm losing um, losing my phone and, and no internet. So I think if it's okay with you, I'd like to hand the chair roll over to you for our remaining um, three items. Those are big shoes to fill. I will try not to, <laughs> try not to embarrass you. Well, thank you for doing this. Uh, 25, 26, and 27 A and B. Commissioner, Commissioner Haynes, this is uh, Lucy Kemp with the planning department. Um, given that I've received notice from at least one other commissioner um, of a potential power outage and we have Commissioner Lawson off the line, I'm, I'm a little concerned about an item that has a timing issue. And if with your uh, agreement, I would like to recommend that the commission take up item 27 A and B that have council action or that have already had bills filed. And so I, I just wanna make sure that we're able to hear those items to ensure that there isn't any confusion in terms of the commission's review in the event that we lose quorum due to the storm. Um, would you entertain that as a recommendation? And I think you would just simply note a change in agenda without, without opposition to move items 27 and 20, 
27 A and B, which is the uh, Riverwalk pub cancellation and uh, rezoning uh, with Councilman Rosenberg. Commissioners, are there any objections? If so, please raise your hand. If not, we will go ahead and shift to items 27 A and B first prior to- I don't have any, losing I don't have any objection and I'm back. Okay. All right, well, let's be, let's be prudent and we will shift to item 27. Um, so we will go ahead and have the staff presentation. Abby, is this you? That's right, it's me. Um, this is Abby Rickoff, and I'll be um, presenting <clears throat> item 27A, which is case 2000P-003-003, uh, a request to cancel a portion of the Riverwalk PUD. Um, I'll be presenting this case with the following item, 27B, at one time because they're associated cases. Um, however, please note that we'll need two separate motions, uh, one for each case. Next slide, please. So item 27A is a request to cancel a portion of a planned unit development for properties located at 6000 River Valley Drive and Newsom Station Road on approximately 58.62 acres. Next slide, please. Staff recommendation is to disapprove. Next slide. Um, to give you some history, at the January 21st, 2021 Planning Commission meeting, the commission considered a request for a periodic review for a portion of the Riverwalk PUD that included this site and additional property located on the west side of Newsom Station Road. The commission found this portion of the PUD to be active based on the criteria of section 1740-120H of the Metro Zoning Ordinance. No further action was required after the PUD was determined to be active. Next slide, please. The site is zoned RM2 multifamily residential. Uses are controlled by the PUD overlay, which currently permits 61 multifamily residential units at this site. Next slide, please. The site is approximately 58.62 acres, and it's located on the east side of Newsom Station Road, north of I-40 and south of River Valley Drive. The original PUD approved by Metro Council was approved by Metro Council in 2000 to permit 552 residential units, comprised of 491 single-family lots, 61 townhome units, a pool, clubhouse, and playground with access to Newsom Station Road, and a one-mile-long greenway trail along the Harpeth River on approximately 320 total acres. In 2003, the PUD was amended to add seven single-family lots, seven additional single-family lots, resulting in 498 single-family lots and 61 townhome units for 559 total units. Please note that the plan shown on this screen is the original plan approved by Council in 2000. It is not the amended 2003 plan. All of the single family lots have since developed in previous phases one through four. The preliminary PUD permitted 61 townhome units in open space and the subject section of the PUD in an area desi designated as phase five located at the southern boundary. Um, and it's noted on the screen within the red boundary area. A final site plan and grading plan for 61 townhome units was approved in 2004 and the master permit was approved in 2006 and has since expired. Next slide, please. It's also important to note that an application for a final site plan to develop 61 townhome units in phase five was filed with the planning department on September 30th, 2020. The final site plan review was placed on hold until after the PUD periodic review process was complete. Once the commission determined the PUD to be active on January 21st, 2021, review of the final site plan continued. The final site plan has now been approved. This slide includes the final site plan that was submitted to planning on um, September 30th, 2020, that has now been approved. Next slide, please. Staff finds the PUD to be consistent with the land use policies of this site. The suburban neighborhood maintenance policy supports various types of residential development, including single family and two family, but also multifamily. 
Council approved master plan for the overall PUD includes single family lots to the north and multi-family units at the subject site under review. Although the site does include areas of conservation policy, identifying potentially sensitive environmental features, these areas are generally located outside of the phase five development footprint where land disturbance has already occurred. The layout of the council approved master plan clusters the townhome development footprint to the neighborhood maintenance policy area in that light yellow color, limiting additional disturbance in the conservation policy areas in the green color. Next slide, please. Here is a bird's eye view of the site as it exists today, um, reflecting the areas that have already been disturbed. Next slide, please. It's also important to note that the recently approved site plan maintains the general layout of the council um, adopted plan, and it's also consistent with the neighborhood maintenance and conservation policies. No changes to the PUD um, were proposed with, that, with the final site plan. Next slide, please. The Planning Commission previously determined this portion of the PUD to be active on January 21st of this year, um, consistent with staff's recommendation to find the PUD active. The appropriateness of the PUD was also evaluated during the PUD periodic review process. Since the existing PUD is consistent with the neighborhood maintenance policy at this location, staff recommends disapproval of the PUD cancellation request. Uh, this concludes my presentation for item 27A. Um, next slide, please. 27B is the associated case 2021Z-026PR-001. Next slide, please. <clears throat> this is a request to rezone properties at River Valley Drive and Newsom Station Road from RM2, multifamily residential, to RS40, single family residential, on approximately 58.62 acres. Next slide, please. Staff recommendation is to disapprove. Um, as previously explained, the Commission considered a request for periodic review for this portion of the Riverwalk PUD um, in January of this year. And the Commission found this portion of the PUD to be active based on the criteria of the zoning code, um, with no further action being required um, after the PUD was determined to be active. Next slide. The existing uses of RM2 are controlled by the PUD overlay, which currently permits 61 multifamily units at this site. The proposed zoning of RS40 would permit a maximum of 63 units based on the total acreage only. Application of the subdivision regulations may result in fewer units at this site. Next slide, please. The site is approximately 58.62 acres um, and uh, is located within a portion of the PUD, which was approved to permit 61 townhome units on the portion that is uh, proposed to be rezoned. The general layout approved by council clusters the townhome development along a central spine at the top of the ridge, located away from Newsom Station Road. The final site plan maintains the same general uh, development footprint, setting aside approximately 54 acres as open space, consistent with the adopted PUD. Next slide, please. The neighborhood maintenance policy uh, suburban supports various types of residential development, including single family, two family, and multifamily. In some instances, multifamily zoning is appropriate in the T3 neighborhood maintenance policy area, particularly when the overall density is consistent with the surrounding area and a multifamily product could provide for a more sensitive design. Besides existing RM2 zoning and PUD overlay, allow for multifamily development in a concentrated area clustered away from the steep slopes, which is consistent with the goals of the conservation policy. Next slide, please. An RM2 level density um, is similar to the density permitted at adjacent sites, including the remainder of the PUD uh, located in the RS15 zoning district. The proposed RS40 zoning yields a similar maximum number of units as permitted by the existing PUD, but traditional subdivision development under RS40 zoning would very likely result in additional disturbance to areas that would have remained undisturbed. Next slide, please. The portion of the PUD proposed for rezoning was previously considered by the commission during the periodic review process. The Planning Commission determined this portion of the PUD to be active with no further action required, indicating that the current zoning is appropriate at this site. 
Staff recommends disapproval of the rezone request as the current zoning is consistent with the policy at this location. This concludes my presentation and I'm available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abby. And I think Councilman Rosenberg is the applicant. So Councilman, we will give you the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll wait until after my constituents have had an opportunity to speak. Very good. We're then going to be ready to uh, take calls from the members of the public who wish to call in. Your screen should now show the call in number. Uh, you do not need to wait to call until others have called in or finished speaking. You'll be placed into a queue. As a reminder, please only call in on this current case. When you begin your testimony, please state your name, address, and whether you support or oppose the item. We are not able to display a timer visually, but Sean will be keeping track of time. She will give you a 30 second warning when your time is nearly up. She'll also let you know when your time is up so we can disconnect and move on to the next call. While we wait for the callers to get into the queue, Lisa, did we receive any emails on this item? Hi, yes, this is Lisa Milligan with planning. We received uh, 17 emails in support of the request for cancellation. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lisa. Sean, do we have any callers on 27A and 27B? Yes, uh, Commissioner, we do have callers. We have several in the queue, so we'll work on um, getting the first one in and then just try to keep them coming through after that. Thank you so much. Caller, thank you so much for calling in. If you'll state your name and address, you'll have two minutes. Indeed, yeah. yeah. Chris Palumbo here. I live at 7505 Woodstream Drive in Nashville. Uh, thank you, Metro Nashville Planning Commission, for hearing me and uh, for your leadership, especially during this difficult year. I'm calling in regards to 27 A and B uh, River Walk and the 58.6 acres to be developed. I wish to see the committee approve canceling the planned unit development and rezone the proposal to single family. Uh, as the area requires some nuance and attention here on the far west end of the county, we are way out, uh, outside in the west, and uh, it's somewhat rural, suburban here. The topography is the Harpeth River and lots of hills, um, and, you know, the roads here uh, thread through hills and low areas. I wanted to describe the unique area to you and, and, uh, and say that uh, uh, the change that's planned right now would be disruptive. I've lived here for 10 years. Uh, we welcome the new homes, the new homeowners as well. However, I wish that the character of the community to be re remain as it is, single family homes with single family owners in each dwelling and a uniform amount of space and environment uh, between the homes. There's old mature trees here, uh, and that space is gonna be important. That's what we have today. Uh, allowing townhomes would be unfair, I think, to those who have purchased land here uh, and, and homes here in this area, down Newsom Station and then in the, in the close area. Uh, townhomes, I think, would be out of place. The density of the townhomes would be out of place, and the process of packing more than 60 townhomes into that little hilly area would be novel for the for this community. Um, and that's all I'd like to share. Thank you so much. Thank you, caller. Sean, do we have another caller? We do, we're just reminding them to mute. So I'll take a moment um, to remind all of our callers that when you um, hear the second operator pick up, make sure you go ahead and mute your device that you're streaming on so that we can put you right in. Um, and with that, we have the next caller in the meeting. Caller, thank you so much for calling. Please state your name and address and you'll have two minutes. Is this is me. Uh, my name is uh, John Lancaster. And you said my address? Hello? Yes, please, we need your address. Oh, 6709 Boundary Run, Nashville, Tennessee, 37221. So you'll have two minutes. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about the uh, item 27 uh, that I uh, that I want uh, the single homes, not the townhomes, uh, for the rezoning. 
So I support the single homes, not the townhomes for that, for Riverwalk. Thank you so very much for the phone call. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sean, do we have another caller? You have the next caller. Uh, thank you so, thank you so much. Please state your name and address, and you'll have two minutes. Uh, this is George Dean. I'm the attorney representing the property owner. Uh, Tom White couldn't make it tonight, uh, so he sent me along just to make a few brief comments. Our offices are at 511th Avenue uh, in downtown Nashville. Um, uh, as uh, uh, was said by the staff member, Amelia, uh, the planning commission looked at this just a little while back. The uh, question then was whether or not the uh, PUD was active. The planning commission looked at it, determined that the PUD was active and that uh, activity was going on and that it should be continued. Uh, the, uh, in the meantime, since January 23rd, 21st, I guess, was the, the date, the uh, developer has submitted a final site plan, and that final site plan has been approved by the staff. Uh, I mention that because under the Tennessee Vested Rights Act, the uh, approval of the site plan vests the rights in the property owner to go forward with the project, regardless of what happens to the zoning change. We still oppose the zoning change because the property complies with the provisions of the comprehensive plan. Amelia outlined that. Clearly, uh, this use is uh, appropriate in a T3 uh, neighborhood uh, maintenance area. And so we'd ask that the Planning Commission both uh, recommend against the cancellation of the PUD and recommend against the zoning change. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Sean, next caller. You have another caller. Thank you so much. Caller, you've got, uh, please state your name and address and you'll have two minutes. Hi, my name is Adrian Nevin and I live at 505 Blue Stem Court in Riverwalk. Um, I would like to support the cancellation of the PUD or in the alternative to have single family homes. Um, every time that you all throw the map, Blue Stem is one of the roads that will be affected. I have two small children. I'm afraid of the workers, the people that are going to be overlooking my backyard. Um, it's my understanding that the roads are going to be private, and so those homeowners are going to have to pay for the roads. I lived in a neighborhood previously in Bellevue where it was private roads, and it was a nightmare. I think that's something that so needs to be taken into consideration. Those were single-family homes, and even men had a hard time maintaining the roads. I can only imagine with townhomes. Um, like we've said, Bellevue is hilly. And I just feel like the topography, which is my backyard, is um, I, I couldn't imagine building anything up there. I think that needs to be considered with the landslides, the rain, the rain we're having right now really needs to be considered. Um, gosh, there's so many reasons why I oppose this. Um, I also feel like um, our neighborhood is beautiful and it needs to be kept that way. And it needs to have only those single town homes. If you are not going to approve the cancellation, at least it let it be single family homes. I could really go on and on. I love our neighborhood. We have such a great community as evidenced by how many people are opposed to this. And um, I just want to kind of keep it the way it is. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you so much caller. Sean, more callers? You want to do it? You have the next caller. Please state your name and address, and you'll have two minutes. Thank you so much. Yes, my name is Lisa Ammon. I live in Riverwalk at 6412 River Place Drive. I support the application to cancel the PUD and rezone the single family. In fact, I don't want anything to be built on this hill, neither townhomes or single-family homes, for the following reasons. 
The road is my backyard. I have lived with the nightmare of rock trucks going up and down, dust, film all over my second story windows. I can see everything from my second story, second story window happening up there. There's also watershed. I don't know if this, I have heard that this is going to be a private road that these townhome owners or single family owners may have to maintain themselves. My husband and I are living this exact same nightmare with some property that we own. With the exact same scenario, it has halted building permits for over 20 years from concerns from the watershed department. It's been a huge nightmare. I want to know who is going to address the water runoff issue on this private road if it's a private road and what damage it will do to a metro maintained road at our entrance. It will devalue our home. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, caller. Sean, next caller. Yep. Commissioner, do you have the next caller? Thank you so much. Please state your name and please state your name and address, and you'll have two minutes. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, my name is Yang He. I reside over here at 7504 Woodstream Drive. Um, I'm speaking about, uh, I'm, I'm 27. Um, yeah, I don't feel too strong about uh, the current zoning of the townhomes because the townhomes are really just out of character for, you know, this neighborhood. Now, the density is just uncharacteristic of the neighborhood. Um, it will be pretty unfair to us, those of us who, um, you know, the current homeowners um, to add a different design to it. So... Yeah, I really disagree with the staff's recommendation, and I wish to uh, just rezone it to uh, single-family homes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sean, next caller. Thank you. You have the next caller. Good evening. Please state your name and address, and you'll have two minutes. Thank you so much. David and Sylvia Chen, we live at 6424 River Place Drive, and we support the cancellation. Um, we definitely do not want townhomes to be built. If anything, single family, um, just to maintain our property value, but also we're very concerned about the retaining wall in our backyard and the issues that could happen with water runoff. When we first moved in, we already had issues, and that was nothing being built up there destroying the what is there to protect us from the water runoff. So we're worried about that issue. And also, since we've lived here, we've lived here approximately five years. So the home was here, uh, the retaining wall, um, and how it was originally built, the homes on our side of the street were all, the hill is behind us, and it's a single retaining wall for all. But... Even without me knowing, I've had several people do work in my backyard and not me asking, but all of them have said uh, our retaining wall needs to be replaced. Um, it was done at a time where I guess Nashville allowed railroad ties, um, which they don't do anymore, which I've been informed by several contractors uh, for this exact reason that they break down. Um, so we already have problems with it holding back the hill. You know, my worry is, Who's going to be responsible for all that edit? Caller, you have 30 seconds. Thank you very much. Um, and so we already also have problems with water runoff. As several homes on our side have to have sub pumps that deal with the water runoff uh, from flooding the underside of their home. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, caller. Sean, more callers? You have the next caller now. Good evening. You'll state your name and address. You'll have two minutes. All right, thank you. My name is Ryan Nevin, and I live at 505 Blue Stem Court in the Riverwalk neighborhood. And I'm calling in to uh, support item 27 and and the uh, the cancellation of the PUD, and then the alternative, have it be just rezoned to single-family homes as opposed to townhomes. You know, first, I, I don't think anything should be built in that area in general. Um, where my house and road is located, you know, that is practically our backyard. 
And so, one, I'm worried about just in general privacy with people living, you know, 20 feet above us looking straight down on us. Even a fence wouldn't be able to give us any privacy. And, you know, all of our, the backs of our homes are pretty much all windows. Um, second, I'm, I'm, my real big concern is the traffic and congestion of adding that many homes and that many cars. You know, that's going to really add to the morning and afternoon rush hour, especially when people are trying to get onto the interstate. And then additionally, we only have that one gas station convenience store on Newsom Station Road in McCrory, which is already packed as it is. I can't imagine what it's going to be like when we add that many more homes to it, especially when you know it's already hard to find just a pump or a parking space. Um, uh, another concern is the potential of flooding and drainage issues. I also, like a previous caller, have lived in a neighborhood where it was privately owned roads, and it was a nightmare for us, and we would, like the HOA just any little fix took forever to get. Oh, you took Thirty seconds. Processes. It took forever to get through approval processes and large expenses, and nothing ever got done. To where we had tons of flooding and drainage issues in our neighborhood, but we still couldn't get anything done. That's that is like the reason we left that neighborhood and moved here, and now that's going to be those kind of roads are going to be above my property, and I'm very worried about their flooding and drainage issues coming in the future, and how they're going to be able to handle that. At, privately owned. Thank you. Thank you so much, caller. Sean, next caller, please. Okay, thanks. Sherry, you have the next caller. Good evening. Please take your name and address and you'll have two minutes. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm Mark Bellis. I live at 504 Blue Stem Court and I'm in support of not building the townhomes. I rather prefer there not be anything built because um, this is directly in my backyard and pretty much everybody else has said. Um, I mean, everybody would be looking down on our backyard and our retaining wall when we moved here four years ago. The guy told us it needed to be replaced then and it's only getting worse because it's starting to lean inward and we share the same retaining wall with our neighbors and any other stress put on that, I'm afraid, would just finish it off and then also concerned with just the additional traffic is where the first turn in inside river walk and it can get pretty busy in the morning and afternoon hours. And then just the flooding, um, Newton Station floods all the time. It's probably flooding now, I don't know, but they cut it off right at our entrance too. So if you are coming this way and it's blocked off, that can, uh, this increases the traffic of everybody turning around. And then I think the townhomes is overall just wouldn't fit. We moved here to get away from townhomes and apartments just to be around families and single family homes. And and I'd rather not look out my back window or kitchen window and just see more townhomes. That just kind of makes it unfair for moving here. And um, that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you so much, caller. Sean, we're ready for the next caller. Sherry, you have the next caller. Good evening. If you'll state your name and address, you'll have two minutes. Okay. Um, hello, this is Mary Ann Greeno. I live at 1628 Harper Pond Drive in Riverwalk, and I represent the Riverwalk Homeowners Association. First of all, let me say that we are a very welcoming neighborhood. One of the reasons we're opposed to this is due to the location of this site. This land is at the top of a steep hill. The road designated for this is just a few hundred feet from our already busy entrance on Newsom Station Road. We presently have over 600 homes. That's about 1,200 cars in and out of one entrance not to mention all the trucks and deliveries that go in and out all day long. 60 townhomes would be an additional 100 cars coming down a hill. Trying to turn left with cars are coming in and have just rounded the turn from Newsom Station Road. There's not another possible location for a road to um, go up and down that hill. Newsom Station already has other subdivisions and it's narrow winding road and it's quite busy and it doesn't need another hundred vehicles the guardrail on a certain spot was recently replaced once again in a very dangerous location there 
So please consider the dangers that this added traffic would cause us. I appreciate you listening. Thank you so very much. Sean, do we have more callers in the queue? Yes, Chair, we do. Um, I'll let you know when you have the next one. And you should have the next caller now. Thank you. If you'll give us your name and address, you'll have two minutes. Certainly. Hey, thank you very much. My name is Tom Keeker. Um, I live at 7533 Woodstream Drive in, um, in Riverwalk. Um, I agree with a lot of the things many of the callers um, have said um, thus far. One of the things I wanted to really emphasize is the safety issue. Um, I know this is something that's been zoned and there's been a lot of planning in place on this for, for a long time, um, coming up on at least 20 years. Um, there's a, probably a lot more traffic, a lot more things going on through um, through Newsom Station Road, which is a very, as you can tell from the map, a very narrow, windy road uh, coming back into um, where people come in their residences. One of the things you cannot see, just to, for people to consider, you can't tell from the, this map, is um, a lot of people enter. I enter in the same entrance that this uh, this people would enter this sub or this this new section of the subdivision into. Um, a lot of people actually come into this uh, neighborhood from Newsom Station Road. They don't necessarily come from the highway. Um, there's a one lane. Uh, road. As you go through, it goes from two lanes, then it becomes one lane underneath a railroad. I haven't heard anybody mention, I don't know if anybody's ever done a traffic study on that. I don't know what it would be to have, you know, if it's 60 homes, 120 cars leaving, it, coming back every day, at least 240 trips just for the cars themselves, and a certain percentage of them coming through that one lane area. Um, I probably go through that area at least 80% of the time right now. I don't know if that's something that's been you have to check. With something that's a lot different now than it was at one time. Um, so that, and, and it, as there many people have said, it's, uh, it's certainly out of character with the other homes in the neighborhood. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you very much for your time. I certainly, I, uh, I support uh, uh, the, the PUD cancellation and um, rezoning from RM2 to RS40. Thank you. Thank you so much, caller. Sean, we'll wait for the next caller. Sure, you have the next caller now. Good evening. You've got uh, two minutes. If you'll state your name and address, please go ahead. Good evening. My name is Bonnie Bear. I live at 6232 River Valley Drive. Um, we, we, we moved here a few years ago, and we'd love we chose to, my husband was born and raised in Nashville, and we came back up here to live here, and he chose this area because it was quiet, and it was family-oriented, and it was spread out, and it uh, were away from all the busy, you know, shopping and everything, and it's, it's just, we love this area. And to put townhomes in this area is, is just not, it doesn't fit with the community environment. There are no townhomes around here. Uh, I don't know how far you'd have to drive to find them, but there's all residential, all up and down Newton Station and even um, on 70 and McCoy Road. So we just are, we are in support of um, the cancellation of the PUD and the rezoning to, if it would have to be rezoned, a single family. As many of the callers have said, we are not interested in having anything in that area. It's just because of the environment where we are. And um, I do believe it looks like to me that there would be drainage issues. And there are a lot of other issues to, uh, you know, as far as the HRA cannot maintain, do anything about maintaining private uh, roads. Um, you have 30 seconds. Anyway, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Thank you most, so much for calling. Sean, do we have more callers? Here you have the next caller. Good evening. Please state your name. Please state your name and address, and you'll have two minutes. Go ahead. Good evening. My name is Michael Osmond. I live at nine sixteen Falling Water Court, which is in the Riverwalk neighborhood. Uh, many of the same reasons people have already mentioned. I will reiterate some. Uh, first and foremost is the density and the style of homes does not match. 
Uh, you literally have to drive miles from exit uh, 192 to 196 to find something even remotely close to these townhomes. So that's four miles before you find like-minded homes. Uh, second main reason is the topography issues. Uh, they also have to probably put in a water lift there for the pump to get water there. And, of course, sewage rain, uh, rain runoff is obviously an issue for the homeowners that are backed up against. But also on onto Newsom Station Road, uh, there's frequent uh, erosion issues causing uh, minor landslides at this time that are common, uh, but probably will increase should... Um, should not start to go in and more land is cleared up there. Uh, what has been previously mentioned, the flooding on Newsom Station Road is very, very common due to the Harpeth River. Uh, and so that forces all of this traffic now to go one way. And so the additional cars will, will increase that. And finally, I, I'm employed as a first responder. And looking at this, there is no secondary means of egress throughout this neighborhood, which I understand that's already been approved, but Something else to consider by the time you add in more congestion there. Uh, thank you for your time. We are, we're asking for disapproval. No, approval. Approval, disapproval. Thank you so much, caller. Sean, do we have more callers? There you have the next caller. Good evening. If you'll state your name and address, you'll have two minutes. Please go ahead. Yeah, my name is Jeff Ammon at 6412 River Place Drive. And my concerns is I don't even know why they're building up there in the first place. The original variance was that that was not to be built up there, but uh, the Parkview area was the, the variance that that was supposed to be built in lieu of that hill. But if it has to go through, and I'm surprised that they're planning even did this originally, but if they're planning it to go through, they need to have its own separate roads because the road entrance itself and the maintenance issue of it should be on its own accord. Uh, the entrance cannot handle another 60 to 100 home or another 60 to 100 uh, cars. Uh, the railroad passage is an issue. And then what happens if a private road, when they can't maintain it, they get snow issues or ice issues? Are they all going to park 100 cars down in the main entrance? So it's a lot, a lot of problems about this thing. So I want to cancel the PUD. I want to cancel the whole thing. There should be no reason for building up there. And then we were told when we moved in that nothing was going to be built up there because of the original variance. Anyway, my, again, I do not want that to be built. I think it's uh, the topo up there is not conducive to even single homes, nor especially townhomes. All right, thanks very much. Thank you so much, caller. John, more callers, please. You have the next caller. Good evening. Please state your name and address, and you'll have two minutes. Go ahead. Hi, good evening. Thank you for taking my call. My name is Kenneth Kincaid. I live at 7244 Riverfront Drive in Riverwalk. Uh, I support the application to cancel the PUD and rezone to single family uh, for all of the reasons that my neighbors have already mentioned as far as the road. Um, looking at the map, you can see that Newsom Station Road uh, is just going to be unbelievable to try to get even more families in there. I mean, if you have families, you know school buses have to get in there in the morning and people have to get to work. And we just, just can't support anymore. Um, but if, if we have to, uh, 20 houses is a lot better than 61 townhomes. Um, our community, that's the, the burden that that would place also on our amenities in the area uh, is just uh, the, the burden that we just can't, can't support. Um, and the, as far as the townhomes themselves, uh, there, there are no townhomes anywhere around here. I mean, it, it'd be so out of place to drop um, multifamily living inside of a neighborhood like this. Um, it just it just doesn't go with the appearance. It doesn't go with the style. Uh, and it's really out of character. So I would support the application to cancel the PUD and rezone to single family. Thank you. Thank you so very much, caller. 
John, next caller, please, ma'am. You have the next caller. Good evening. If you'll state your name and address, you'll have two minutes. Please go ahead. Thank you. My name is Henry Hartman. I live at 6232 River Valley Drive in Riverwalk. Um, an awful lot of issues have been raised so far. The big one, I guess, is the private road and an HOA and just all of the uh, problems that result from that. There's also the traffic on Newton Station Road. Um, and again, I, this is just a very family-oriented area. It's very conducive, single-family homes. Uh, I moved here for this reason. I uh, moved here for the, the space between the houses, the lack of traffic issues, which, you know, if anybody was in Nashville, it's kind of hard to find a place where you don't have that. But in short, I support canceling the PUD. And if we have to have anything up on and I agree with the other people that I don't see why I want to put anything up there. But uh, if they've got to put something up there, it should be single family homes. Thank you. And thank you for listening. Thank you so much, caller. Sean, more callers? There you have the next caller. Good evening. If you'll state your name and address, you'll have two minutes. Please go ahead. Yes, my name is uh, Shafiq Adizi. My address is 1525 Bending River Drive, Nashville, Tennessee, 3721. So before I do that, I think the rezoning hearing um, came on the wrong time because everybody right now tries to be safe. Uh, so I think if it was another day that you guys have more people to call me with the MLP. So uh, I, I am against, you know, the, uh, the town uh, home versus single family home. So we prefer, my wife and I, we live here for 10 years. So we prefer single family home. Because uh, so the, uh, this area is suited for single family homes and homes that match the style of our community. So that, that's my opinion. So we prefer single homes if it's possible. Thank you so much, caller. No problem. And thank you. Sean, more callers? Chair, you have the next caller. Good evening. If you'll, if you'll please state your name and address. You'll have two minutes. Please go ahead. Hello, my name is David Clipple. I live at 6409 River Place Drive in Riverwalk. There are many reasons why I support this, uh, both 27A and 27B. The first are the environmental concerns about the track itself. As planning shows, less than five acres of this 50 acres, 58 acre site is actual buildable land, and it's the summit result where impervious cover in almost the entire five acres would lead to severe runoff. Um, this runoff has already caused two different landslides onto Newsom Station, closing that road at different times. And I just drove it in tonight after the storm to see even more Little Rocks on the road, Newsom Station, which is a major city road as well. And God forbid what would ever happen if the runoff fell onto the CSX side and that cliff. The change to RS zoning would reduce the impervious cover and reduce the density of this particular five acres that is to be developed. Um, as RM density is considerably higher than the RS density proposed. The second is that this section is completely out of character for the rest of the Riverwalk PUD, which is over 200, which in entirety is RS owned, except for this track. The Riverwalk PUD is over 200 acres. And as people said, I did the trip. It's a 14 minute drive to Bellevue West, or to one Bellevue to find any comparable zoning. Third, Planning 20 years ago required a geological survey of the land and the damage done by the previous owners in terms of excavation has not even taken into account 
the new geological assessment needed to develop this property. And finally, the current owner of the land was well aware of the change was proposed even back when he bought the property in 2007. And it's not clear to me why this change was not. All of your time has expired. Please finish your thought. And was not done at that time. Thank you. Thank you so much, caller. <clears throat> Sean, do we have more callers? You have the next caller now. Good evening. If you'll state your name and address, you'll have two minutes. Please go ahead. Yeah, this is State Representative Bo Mitchell. I live at 6421 River Place Drive. And I'm support in support of this uh, pro uh, proposed legislation because I originally proposed this legislation in 2009. Uh, in fact, it was pending legislation when the current owner bought the property. Uh, in fact, I was uh, a part of that current owner being able to get the property. Uh, there was a previous developer that went bankrupt that uh, had a $1.2 million mortgage on this property. And Bank of, Ameri Bank of America out of Baltimore, Maryland, gave it to this uh, owner at $300,000. And uh, he was notified of the availability of this property by me because I was looking to protect our community and our neighborhood when I was on the council uh, from these townhomes that are totally out of place in this community because Houston City, it's not just Riverwalk, it's multiple uh, uh, subdivisions on Houston Station, and you're talking 12 to 1,500 homes, and as previous callers have stated, there's not a townhome around. So this is our character. Beyond all of that, with the promise of the oh, he was seconds remaining. that he would put single family, you have it's 700 to 750 feet elevation for the geotechnical problems. Harper Valley Utility District has also told them there's going to be a million dollar pumping station required for these townhomes to be responsible for the maintenance and upkeep of that along with the 14 degree elevation of the road that i question whether a fire engine can even get to the top of this so Caller, your time has expired please complete your thought so there is multiple uh problems with this and as i stated it was pending legislation when this gentleman bought the land thank you thank you so much mr mitchell we appreciate your phone call Sean, more callers? Here you have the next caller. Good evening. If you'll state your name and address, you'll have two minutes. Please go ahead. Hi, my name is Kelly Fly, and I live at 1013 River Spring Drive in Riverwalk. And I am calling to um, state that I support the request to cancel the PUD and to rezone the property to single-family homes. Um, I, like others, prefer that nothing be built there on that property. Um, but if something has to be built, I prefer that it be only single-family homes to preserve the character um, of our community and to preserve property values and then I also want to raise the concern about the one lane road that goes underneath the uh, railroad tracks. So thank you. Thank you so very much for your phone call. Sean, more callers? Chair, you have the next caller. Good evening. Please state your name and address, and you'll have two minutes. Please go ahead. And this is Marjorie Rohr. I live at 1445 Bending River Drive in Nashville, Tennessee. I um, am calling because I am opposed to any building on this site. While I have come from a community where it successfully implemented townhomes and single-family dwellings, and therefore don't really have any concern with that aspect, 
my concern lies with the additional building on that location, period. As all of the previous callers have indicated, um, the traffic situation will be very bad on Newsom Station. I am also concerned tremendously with the impact that not only construction runoff, but long-term water runoff will have not only on the homes immediately bordering that area, but also on the Harpeth River, which is just below, which could be a severe economic problem. Newsom Station is a very narrow road, as everybody has indicated, and many people from Riverwalk, Lexington Point, and Boone Trace exit that area through the back end of Newsom Station to Route 70, which is under that railroad bridge. Traffic is horrible there during peak rush hour times. And the infrastructure of Newsom Station and traffic calming devices around that railroad bridge must be considered if anything is going to be done. But again, I want to voice my, uh, my um, dissent for any building to be done on that location. And I thank you for your time. Thank you so very much, caller. Sean, more callers? Here you have the next caller. Good evening. If you'll please state your name and address, you'll have two minutes. Please go ahead. Yes, hello. Thank you, Commissioner. My name is Diane Smith. I'm at ten sixty two River Spring Drive. I do live in Riverwalk, however, my concern goes beyond the Riverwalk neighborhood. As folks have mentioned, we do not have the infrastructure to take on multifamily housing onto Newsom Station. It is not able to be wind based on how the hills and the conservation areas are situated. It's winding. It does go to at one point, one lane under the railroad track. It's, this is a huge problem. And additionally, we have four neighborhoods stacked against each other that have limited access other than coming out onto Newsom Station. And it's all single family homes. I, like others, would prefer that we not have any building on the hill where this is the green corner of Nashville. I love that designation where we get to see the greenery in the hilltops untouched. I know that can't stay always in place, but in this case, given that the infrastructure will be affected, the environment will be infected, is affected, people talk about with the river, landslides, etc. I would like the zoning to it, a minimum go to single family and it could be avoided at all, which is maybe a little bit of a wish, that nothing be built there. And again, we've got the um, safety issue of the entrance too, because it's the only way you could access okay, you have 30 seconds remaining. Due to the conservation uh, alignment of the rest of the hill. And that's just not going to work from a safety standpoint either. So thank you for your consideration. And I humbly request that you shift the zoning to at a minimum single family. Thank you much and have a good evening. Thank you so much, caller. Sean, more callers? Chair, we have heard from all of the callers. So there are no additional callers for this item and you can move on to the next phase of the hearing. Sean, do we need to wait for 30 seconds just to make sure? Chair, we usually take that pause when we have items that have no callers um, because there is a short TV delay. But in this case, we've had a long time for callers to reach us on this item. So um, folks have hopefully called in if they intend to. Thank you so much, Sean. Councilman Rosenberg, would you like to go next? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank you, uh, commissioners, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you to everyone from the community who joined today uh, for all the emails in support of this application, uh, which were still coming in as of a couple hours ago. I uh, appreciate all those emails before and after the
is whether not having a PUD on this property as the application suggests is a proper is proper and then whether the proposed zoning is a proper zoning um, to be clear to find rs40 appropriate you do not have to agree that rm2 is a bad idea here the, the so, so by way of background the pud cancellation and rezoning before you are word for word the same pieces of legislation that were pending in the Metro Council when the current owner purchased this land. So again, the owner purchased this land fully aware that there was legislation moving forward to cancel this PUD and rezone the property to RS40. Um, I'd also like to add that while a site plan may have been approved yesterday, it has not been approved by Harpeth Valley, Valley Utility District. And we need to be prepared for what happens if this does in fact require changes before it can move forward. Um, and that's what makes this still a very active question before us. Um, the PUD question is really subsidiary to the zoning, so I'll focus on the zoning. And the prevailing question is, is RS40 appropriate? Well, on one side of the property, the zoning is R80. On the other side of the property, the zoning is RS15. RS40 would operate as an appropriate and really ideal step down between the two zonings. It would further protect the community character uh, as this property is in the midst of 1,100 single family homes and a full 15 minute drive to the nearest multifamily of any kind. Single family homes are entirely appropriate here and it's consistent with the community plan. Uh, the only concern the staff brought forth was concern about trees being cut down. But if you look at the contours of the site, or even just go look at the property with your own eyes, doing so, cutting down those trees would only be lighting money on fire. There are steep slopes, so steep in fact, that we're seeing landslides onto Newsom Station Road from this site, despite that the fact that the land has been untouched since the previous owner cleared it more than a decade and a half ago. So where you see it clear on the satellite picture there, that was not done by the current owner. It was already that way. Um, actually, I'll note that if you drive Newsom Station Road adjacent to this property right now um, with some really bright lights, you'll see that a landslide has encroached on the travel lanes. So you're going around that landslide right now. Um, also, with respect to the trees, it wasn't out of the goodness of the developers' hearts that they limited development on the hill to just that footprint. You just can't build on most of it. And subdivision regulations and policy would protect most of this area anyway. Um, if, however, the commission remains concerned about trees being cut down or with the limited development area, um, and you want to support a slightly denser single family zoning or place other conditions, I'd welcome any modifications you recommend to the legislation and I'd be glad to carry those forth to council. Um, but this is an appropriate zoning proposal for this property on in this very hilly, very windy, semi-rural area where there are only single family homes. So again, thank you commissioners. Thank you for the overwhelming support of the affected community. And again, I ask that you recommend approval of this application and answer the question of whether it's appropriate for this property to be zoned single family with a resounding yes. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Director, if it's okay with you, I would love to ask our legal counsel to give the rest of the commission a quick overview from a legal perspective, given one, that we found the PUD to be active and two, that the site plan is moving through permitting. So if, if that's appropriate, I'd like to call on legal counsel. Uh, this is Alex Dickerson with Metro Legal. Yes, the, um, the site plan has been approved and it is vested as of the approval before uh, the, the staff. Um, and there, the a question that some people may have is whether there is a, a pen, the pending legislation effect, whether it is pending legislation for purposes of that doctrine. That's a legal doctrine that allows the would allow the commission to um, pause an application that had not yet been filed um, in order to allow the legislation to, to complete its course. Here in this case, the application for um, for the for the site was filed well before the ordinance was so the pending legislation doctrine would not be applicable here 
and the commission would need to decide to uh, approve or deny it separate from the pen, from the uh, ordinance that was subsequently filed. Thank you, Councilor. Councilman Rosenberg, you have your hand raised. Do you want to speak again? Um, if you don't mind, just I'd like to briefly um, acknowledge what uh, Mr. Dickerson said and note that it will only be vested if they are actually able to move forward with this plan, if they're actually able to um, develop, if Harvard Valley approves it. So the question, so whether or if they do in fact Intent, uh, proved to be vested and they're able to move forward, then this zoning change will not end up having an impact. But if they're not, then it will be very important that this zoning change is made. So I'd add, just note that there's no legal jeopardy by making this zoning change. It simply wouldn't have an impact. And I'd ask the Planning Commission to, uh, as Mr. Dickerson said, you know, consider this independently of, of what's being, uh, what's moving forward with the site plan. Thank you, Councilman. Thank All right, you. we will we will uh, close the public hearing and open this up for discussion by the commissioners. Um, Commissioner Blackshear, are you recusing yourself on this matter? No, I'm not. Um, okay. And I'm going to start with you since you're first alphabetically. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> um, I'm still thinking through the legal implications of it. I mean, I hear what um, our council has said and what the councilman said, and the councilman's um, words were actually really helpful, um, but still thinking through this. So, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying. If the rights are vested, then whatever decision we made, if the decision was um, to cancel the PUD or rezone, then it just wouldn't be applicable, but I mean, is the decision whether it's vested, is that to come? I, I guess I didn't really understand what um, you were saying, Alex, regarding that piece. Uh, yes, this is uh, Alex Dickerson, Metro Legal again. It's already vested. It's vested for as soon as the planning staff approves it. There's nothing that makes it a contingent vesting on something else. Um, I, I don't want to speak for, uh, for the council member, but I think his position was more that if this doesn't work, then and the, it falls through. Then what does that what does that affect? But as of right now, the final site plan is approved. They are vested in the law as is, not subject to anything that would be passed uh, by council. That's currently pending for lack of pending, not in legal sense, but is currently not law yet. So we could decide something today and it'd be completely irrelevant to what's going on at the property. I, I'm not, I guess I'm not sure exactly what, what you mean by that. I mean, does it, if we, if we decided that um, the uh, PUD is to be canceled and the rezoning should happen, I'm trying to figure out, does it matter if the, if the rights have been vested? Yeah, if, if, if the obviously if the rights are vested, then the applicant is secure in in all the existing state of the law as of the approval by planning today. Okay. Um, well, this is a really interesting um, item before us. I mean, clearly, I'm not sure the last time that um, I've been a, on an item where there was so much um, neighborhood um, feedback solely on one side. So um, clearly this is a really important matter for the for the neighborhood. I mean, obviously everyone has just heard what um, the council has said regarding the vested rights, um, but I'll, I mean, I'll go through, I guess, the analysis um, and clearly will respond to everything that we've heard, both from the council person and then from the applicant and the, uh, or the, the lawyer for the applicant and the, um, or the lawyer for the property owner and the neighbors. Um, you know, and I guess I'll, um, I mean, we've talked about the PUD cancellation and it's been found to be active. And one, the 27 APs, I think, um, and the council person said this too, it, it, it seemed to be, um, the lesser of the um, the items as far as importance and the question really in a lot of um, minds was whether it should be 
single family zoning. I mean, certainly this neighborhood seems appropriate to have single family zoning. Um, and I thought the councilman's words were helpful um, when, when thinking about this, whether the, the RM2 um, or the, the single family zoning, they don't necessarily have to be, um, you can think both would be appropriate for the area um, and, and, and still um, those two ideals are not warring, I guess. One of the things I thought was really interesting when um, thinking about all of the the negative impacts that having um, the multifamily housing would cause, uh, there wasn't a lot of attention paid to, or I guess mention made of one of the positive impacts is that you would have presumably, you never know how the development will come out, but presumably less disturbance um, of the site if you went with the current zoning rather than moving forward with the single family. Um, I'm not sure. I'm really interested to hear what the other commissioners have to say about it. I, I mean, I, I, um, I agree honestly with staff's analysis regarding disapproval of both requests. I mean, it just seems inappropriate from the PUD cancellation piece. Um, and then obviously from the, the zoning piece, it seems like the, um, the zoning that's currently in place works, but I do, um, I do certainly understand what the neighbors are saying about the single family um, zoning. Obviously, I would. I, mean, it, it, I know we all have a, a NIMBY aspect to, a, to us, not in my backyard. So I'm sure I would feel the exact same way if I were actually living in this area, maybe um, being away from the, the, the neighborhood can make commissioners a bit more clear eyed on this. But I mean, I, I, I think maybe that the, um, the zoning, the single family zoning, although it would be um, logical and it would make sense, it doesn't necessarily seem to be um, the sole appropriate zoning for this area. And obviously the, the disturbance piece, having it being less disturbed would be appropriate too. I'm not exactly sure the importance of any of this analysis, given what you just said about the vested rights, but um, I would be interested to hear what other commissioners have to say. Thank you so much, Commissioner. We will now move to Vice Chair Farr. Are you still with us? She has uh, lost power um, and is not with us. Did you call Vice Chair Farr? I did. Yes, she okay, is. Perfect. Commissioner Johnson, we will go next to you. Thank you, Chair Haynes. Um, Yes, we heard loud and clear what the community is wanting, and I totally understand it. I would probably feel the same if I were living in that community. And so my conundrum difficulty as a planning commissioner is in January 21st, under the circumstance and under the existing Metro Charter, we determined uh, this part to be active. If we were to able to determine part was inactive, I think we will have more option and action. However, the way I heard our legal uh, counsel, uh, Mr. Davison's analysis is, because we did determine HUD was active uh, in January meeting. So that time, a rightfully applicant or property owner uh, just going into, you know, regular their course, submit the application and moving forward to whatever uh, their phase. So if we were to make different decision tonight, the way I understood is it will possibly uh, interfere with their action, possibly conflict or meddling uh, their plan. Um, so I think that's the uh, risk or you know, phase uh, we are facing. So knowing community and 
knowing existing Metro Charter 17.40.120, uh, as much as I would love to side with a community, but I am having a hard time uh, bring myself to that uh, position and going against staff recommendation. Uh, you know, I understand um, single family, but you know, as Commissioner Brakshia said, sometimes um, multi housing uses, uh, you know, disturbance area can be smaller compared to single family. Uh, plot. So that might be one uh, benefit. And I am really understand the traffic concern and, you know, street. And I am hoping Metro uh, Public Works, if uh, the current application is in that phase, take really good look at it and then see if existing plan is indeed appropriate. Um, but as far as canceling the part at this stage after we've been through January 21st, I'm having a hard time going against uh, staff recommendation, but I'm interested here other commissioners. Thank you, Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Lawson. Well, you know, as I listen to this, is the scenarios have never changed in the last 30 years. Um, I think the community did speak on uh, how they perceive this particular plan. My, my wrestle is, uh, I look at it from the standpoint, and uh, Commissioner Johnson touched on it. The Planning Commission has made a decision regarding this PUD and should stand on that decision. If not, it affects, adversely can affect the credibility of the decisions that are made. Uh, it'll also stipulate, or I'm sorry, not stipulate, but also present further arguments regarding PUDs or subdivisions or, or you know, the best laid plans uh, that you begin to challenge the the planning documents that that we took years to develop, and and how you want our communities to develop, and you've got to stand on those principles. If you don't, the document is worthless. So I'm wrestling with that, uh, and I, and I think that we should stand by what we have said before and ad adapt the staff recommendation. Thank you, Commissioner Lawson. Council Lady Murphy. Thank you, uh, uh, Commissioner Haynes. Uh, question to legal. So if they do not, and maybe this is out of a purview, but if they do not get approved by the Harpeth Valley um, Utility District, uh, what happens? Uh, yeah, this is Alex Dickerson. Legally, legally, what happens? Um, it doesn't change anything with respect to their vested rights. Um, it may prevent them from being able to do what their plan is from their from the Harpeth Valley side, but it doesn't affect legally their vested right. Okay, their vested right in that site plan. Yes. Okay, and can you just? Um, you don't have to give me like the whole, but just there is a difference between what we voted on before was to find the PUD inactive and this is a PUD cancellation. And, and those are two different things, right? They are not, they are not the same action. Is that correct? Yes, but I would, I would defer to Ms. Milligan to, to explain the, the fine differences between them. Lisa, would you mind just highlighting a little bit of of that? These are these are different things that that have been put before us. Like they are different. Is that is that a correct statement? That these are different actions that the the councilman and his district have asked us to take. Is that correct? 
Hi, this is Lisa with the planning department. So the first action that you all were re um, reviewed was a request from the council member for a periodic review of the planned unit development. And, a and essentially what that is, is it's a review to determine if the PUD is active, meaning there has been activity to develop this portion of the PUD. There are specific things that you all look at and um, you all found that this portion of the PUD was active based on that activity um, that has taken place, including installation of storm sewer, um, grading, uh, various things, you all did find it's active. So an inactivity review is a couple of steps. Um, the first part is whether or not it's active or inactive. And then if you all find that it is inactive, then the next step would be to recommend another action, which could be to rezone, to keep the PUD, um, various things. But if found active, then that's when the review stops. And so that's what how that's what that happened. And so subsequent to that, Council Member Rosenberg, after the after it was found active, um, he filed as separate um, a, an application to rezone. Um, and an application to cancel the PUD. And that's what's before us tonight. Um, so in our analysis, you'll see that we did mention that there that we did do the periodic review where you found it active, that we had been reviewing a final site plan, but we also analyzed the existing zoning, the existing PUD versus the zoning, um, the zoning at, that's requested and the PUD cancellation. And so we did review this separately, not as part of the periodic review. We reviewed the applications to cancel the PUD and rezone separately, and that's what's reflected in our analysis. But we did mention the periodic review as that does impact the property in that you all did find it active and they were able to move forward with um, their final site plan. All right, thank you, Ms. Milligan. Um, you know, I, I think I've heard some concerning things tonight about this site location, um, the environmental concerns of, of the water uh, and landslides currently happening. Um, we've already discussed uh, private road, public road issues with other developments tonight. Um, and that's, that's really an issue uh, countywide that is becoming more and more raising its head to the council. I do think it is, you know, there are issues when you go through another development into a private development and vice versa and different HOAs and, and it just gets, gets a little messy there. And so I have, um, a variety of concerns with this development moving forward. I understand that they are invested in their site plan but it sounds like it's not a done deal that this is the development that um, could happen because they are not approved by their utility district that they fall under, which is not our jurisdiction. I get that um, little co-parenting going on there. Um, so I, I do feel like a, a good course of action is to give a backup plan. Um, if, if this falls through, um, the community should know what the next steps are. Or, or what is going to what could happen um, if if they're not approved by the utility plan? And and I think Councilman Rosenberg is being proactive here by by putting that plan into place, putting Plan B into place. I, I don't think that the PUD cancellation is in conflict necessarily with what we've done before, right? I mean, we found it active. Okay, cool. But this is a cancellation, which is different. Um, and and I do think that matching up or getting clarification on what zoning is gonna happen there is reasonable. I think these are reasonable requests in front of us tonight for those reasons, environmentally um, and, and otherwise, just the uncertainty of what, what could happen next. So I do not have a problem um, disagreeing with staff tonight on this one. Um, I, again, like I said, the, the thought that this is already causing mudslides onto New Station Road, which is um, public road and Metro is having to clean that up. And, and who knows what damage could come to the surrounding community through the construction of it. So with that, um, open to, to the rest of our discussion, but but that's where I stand is I think this is a good backup plan and, and I don't have a problem going against staff tonight on it. Mr. Sims. 
Yeah, I find this case um, really bothersome in some ways because we have two very clear and good goals. And one is to really hear the neighbors and what they think really fits into the context of their own neighborhood. And that's a solid goal. The other one, though, is to make sure we really take care of land. I went out there Sunday and spent a lot of time looking at this. And my, I walked away feeling like the neighborhood, who in the heck would want to build on this at all? It is, it is surrounded with a river on one side, a train track on the other, a one-lane bridge under the train track, and a park that's not easy to access. And I'm going, what would you want to do to build on this? And, um, but I know that that's what um, is the case before us. And when you have two competing goals in this case, I think what we have to do is which one causes us the least harm. And I know as much as the neighborhoods want to make sure that their property is all similar, um, they do have some really legitimate issues, but most of those issues, in my opinion, um, and in my experience, would is uh, would be more harmed if we build houses. You're going to have um, a lot more issues in trying to build houses than we are townhouses. And I lived in a neighborhood that for a long time was single family, and then we started getting townhouses, and it actually has made the neighborhood better. So some of this really has to be decided when we do the site plan in terms of really holding their feet to the fire. But in this case, I really have to support the staff. I think they're right. Thank you, Commissioner Sibbs. Commissioner Tibbs, we will end with you. Well, um, I, you know, this was definitely, I think as uh, Commissioner Blackshear originally stated, I don't think I've ever had this much um, support against um, something. And um, it, I spent most of the time trying to really search through, um, you know, what we were able to do and what we weren't able to do. Um, I guess I, you know, I've, I listened to what um, Councilman Murphy had said. I was trying to see about if I really understood the backup plan, but I guess I'm really still more with Commissioner Sims and with others that really uh, based on, you know, especially how our um, our legal has advised us and then given us kind of that background um, and, and basically the parameters that were given um, under the, that the um, staff reviewed that I, I'm also kind of leaning toward uh, approval, uh, you know, going with their uh, recommendation. But, but I will say uh, it's not an easy one for any means because I don't necessarily disagree with what the residents have said. And, you know, I wish we could, you know, go back when the PUD was originally uh, proposed to maybe stop, maybe do some talking more, kind of more working through it at that point. Um, haven't been to the site like Commissioner Sims has, um, but uh, I, I was doing the Google search through it. But anyway, um, I, I, you know, I, I, looking through the tools that we have that I understand as well, um, I am prone to have to go along with a staff recommendation and um, I'll, I'll keep going just so that we can keep it moving and, and discuss, do, go on discussion if we need to, but I'll make a motion to um, disapprove per staff recommendation. All right, we need to have votes separately on items 27A and 27B. So Commissioner Tibbs, if you would clarify your motion, please. Uh, yes, this is a staff uh, um, recommendation to approve staff recommendation for 27A. So that is a motion to approve staff's recommendation of disapproval for 27A. Do we have a second? I second. That is a proper motion and a proper second. I'll go through a quick roll call vote. Commissioner Blackshear. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Lawson. Aye. Council Eddie Murphy. No. Council Eddie Murphy, I could not hear you. Can you repeat that? No. Thank you. Commissioner Sims. Aye. Commissioner Tibbs. Aye. 
Very good, and I will vote aye as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six to one for 27A. Now can I have a motion for 27B, please? So moved. Do I have a second? I second, this is Pearl Sim. Thank you, Commissioner Sim. So we have a motion and a second uh, to approve staff's recommendation of disapproval. Commissioner Blackshear. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Lawson. Aye. Council Lady Murphy. No. Commissioner Sims. Aye. Commissioner Tibbs. Aye. I will vote aye as well. So once again, it passes six to one. So we have concluded. 27A and 27B. Uh, real quickly, let me give everybody an update. I'll ask the director to speak more on this, but it looks like we've had a power outage at the call center. So we may need to defer items 25 and 26. Director, is that correct? Director. Chair, Chairman, this is Bob Lehman. I don't know if Lucy is able to get on or not. Um, but yes, we were, we were going to request that you defer items 25 and 26. So given that uh, the public will not be able to call into the call center, um, I would accept a motion to defer items 25 and 26 if somebody's willing to make that motion. This is, this is Commissioner Sims, and I'm willing to make that motion because I'm about to lose electricity, too. Very good. Commissioner Blackshear, will you second that? I second. All right, quick vote. Commissioner Blackshear. Aye. Commissioner Johnson. Aye. Commissioner Lawson. Aye. Council Lady Murphy. Aye. Commissioner Sims. Aye. Commissioner Tibbs. Aye. All right. We are now deferring items 25 and 26. For, for and one meeting, I should have stated that, that was a one meeting deferral. One meeting deferral. Thank you, Bob. Uh, and given that we don't have the director because she has no phone, uh, we will have no executive report. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, any historic report? <laughs> Uh, before anybody lose power, uh, let me uh, update very quickly. Uh, as you know, the Historic Zoning Commission has been taking on the Historic Zoning Design Guideline cons Consolidation Project. Uh, they have had multiple meetings since uh, 2019, and the final uh, product or proposal was ready in March of 2020. However, under the COVID, uh, they have been deferring that item uh, for past uh, almost a year. But uh, this month, March 17, uh, Metro History Zoning Commission held the public hearing to hear uh, on that uh, consolidation uh, project. However, uh, we are keeping the public hearing open so especially the public who live in the uh, 22 communities who will be affected with a historic zoning design guideline consolidation project, I encourage everybody to take a look at Metro Zone uh, website and then uh, submit a public comment. So we are currently uh, scheduled to vote on that item on April 25th. Thank you, uh, Chairman Haynes. Thanks, Commissioner Johnson. Any legislative update, Council Lady Murphy? I just wanted you to know that we are going through our, our capital <clears throat> improvement budget prioritization that uh, council members are being requested to rank the items in their district, and then that will go into the CIB so we have a little bit more transparency of what our priorities are. Um, and I'll update y'all on a further date about it so we can get moving. One quick update from parks. Um, we have had a policy against renaming parks that's been in place for about a decade. Uh, we are now going through the process to consider changing that policy and consider renaming parks. 
And so over the next several meetings, we'll be discussing the process by which to get public feedback uh, if we move forward with renaming parks. Lisa, Bob, anything else before we dismiss and adjourn? No, I don't believe there's anything else. Hi, no, this is Lisa. I think we're good. Very good. Everyone be safe. Thanks for everybody's input. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.